Once again, New Orleans plays host to a classic matchup, Grambling and Southern, and the Grambling State Tigers taking the field. And today we'll also remember a true giant in the world of sports. Since our last trip to the Bayou, the sports world mourned the passing of Eddie Robinson. The former Grambling State coach spent an astonishing 57 years on the sidelines and racked up a remarkable 408 victories. The legend is gone, but his never-quit attitude and spirit of determination lives on. First-year coach Rod Broadway and the Tigers are 8-2, and, and they're undefeated in the SWAC this season. Led by cornerback Brandon Landers and senior wide receiver Clyde Edwards, the crowd is back at Grambling State. On the other sideline is a familiar face. Pete Richardson has coached Southern for 15 years and has won 11 of the last 14 Bayou matchups. Southern is led by quarterback Bryant Lee, the 2006 Bayou Classic MVP in his freshman year, and senior sensation Garrett Coach, who leads the team in rushing and receiving. And of course, there are the bands. The way these two teams are playing this year, it's sure to be another classic in the Bayou. And a live look inside the New Orleans Superdome. Great anticipation from this crowd that continues to arrive. All of them making the yearly pilgrimage to New Orleans for this big game. And hello, everyone. Welcome to the New Orleans Superdome uh, for the 34th Annual State Farm Bayou Classic today. And the 8-2 and two Grambling State Tigers battling the Jaguars of Southern University, who are 7-3. and three. Now, as you saw prior to our game, we honored legendary Grambling coach Eddie Robinson, who passed away in April. He provided nearly six decades of leadership to American youth as the coach at Grambling. And this game, played before huge crowds year after year here at the Superdome, is a dream of his that lives on. So throughout the day, we'll continue to look back at his life and his continuing legacy but this is the Bayou Classic a rivalry of pageantry and black college football so we look forward to an exciting game and the annual tradition of the battle of the bands at halftime that'll be great and for more on the teams on the field let's go to the guys calling the game Bob Papa and Doug McPherson Bob all right Lewis well when you talk about Grambling State they have eight wins this season they have abundance of tradition but Don they went outside of the Grambling State family to hire their new head coach in the offseason. Rod Broadway comes in after a very successful four year stint at North Carolina Central and he's brought a whole new attitude to Grambling State. Yeah Bob Rod Broadway has brought structure and discipline to Grambling on both sides of the football but no one has bought in more into the system than his quarterback Brandon Landers. Landers has brought patience has shown patience and maturity this year and he leads a balanced attack that has Grambling State back on top in the SWAC. He said don't go out and win the game just manage it correctly and when you talk about Southern they're the model of stability they have Pete Richardson as their head coach he's in his 15th season with the Jaguars tremendous success and just two days ago he agreed to a new three-year contract but he has a red shirt sophomore quarterback that may be young but has experience yeah Bryant Lee is a gamer and in just his second start a year ago in this game the Bayou Classic he was the game's MVP he has kept it going this year as he leads the swack in passing yeah in the game he was 25 of 31 for 254 yards. He also ran it for 57 yards and had a touchdown in leading Southern to a dramatic 21-17 victory. So those are some of the key components in this game. And can Bryant Lee do it again in year number two as the starting quarterback in the Bayou? Now, throughout the course of the day, we will continue our celebration of Coach Eddie Robinson and the legacy that he has left behind, not only for black colleges, but for all of college football. And a few moments ago, his wife Doris was honored here at the Superdome in New Orleans. Doris was honored along with her entire family his partner for 66 years. Now time for a celebration here at the Superdome as we turn things over to our public address announcer, Jerry Romick. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you take a moment of silence as we honor the former Grambling State University head football coach, Eddie Robinson. Thank you. With Doris Robinson in attendance, we are set to kick off the 34th annual 
State Farm Bayou Classic as we continue to remember the legacy of Coach Eddie Robinson here on NBC. In For State Farm Bayou Classic, Grambling State and Southern. Southern comes in with a record of 7-3 and three on the season. Moments ago, head coach Pete Richardson spoke to his team and gave them final instructions for the Classic. We got to believe in each other. Right, That's uh, what this game's all about, man. Uh -huh. Going out there, believing in each other. That's all we had going down the lane. Just you in this room, believing in each other and playing hard for 60 minutes. Now all we got to do is go out and finish and have some fun. Coach Richardson has posted an 11 and 3 mark in the Bayou Classic. Meanwhile, Grambling State's Rod Broadway in his first Bayou. He's with Darren Horton. You're getting ready for your first Bayou. What did you tell the team in the locker room? Well, just in case of winning, uh, protect the football, stop the run, and uh, protect our quarterback. If we can do those things, I like our chances out here. But we need to protect the football, not turn it over. And I think we'll have a pretty good chance of winning this football game. Thanks a lot, Coach. Bob, back up to you. All right, we are set to kick off the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic here in New Orleans. Grambling won the toss. They have deferred. Senior Tim Manuel, an outstanding kicker, will kick it off to Albert Turner and Isaiah Nelson. Nelson, a redshirt freshman. Turner, a redshirt senior. Manuel, a criminal justice major, handles the kickoffs and the punts. And he's got a big leg, and he drills this one. Turner averaging 25 yards in the turn, takes a knee in the end zone. And Southern will start first and 10 at their own 20-yard line, led by quarterback Bryant Lee. 65% completion rate on the season for the redshirt sophomore from Louisiana. 22 touchdown passes on the season. Let's take a look at our starting lineups, powered by AT&T, the new AT&T, your world delivered. You take a look at the skill position players and some tremendous talent. The freshman Darren, senior Darren Coach has been outstanding. And Demarcus Stewart, the best athlete that they have on the offensive line. He's battled through injuries, but Pete Richardson said we need to get him on the field. Lee on the first play of the game finds Turner, who advances it up to the 29-yard line and picks up nine yards on the play. As we take a look at the Grambling State defense. Watch Christian Anthony. He's a sophomore. 44 tackles and six sacks on the season on the defensive front. The linebacking core led by Zaire Wilburn. He's a converted safety, and he has moved up to the linebacking core and has been impressive. 60 tackles, two forced fumbles, and a fumble return for a touchdown. Then in the secondary, DeMichael Dyser is a senior. He has two interceptions on the season. On a second down, handoff goes to Darren Coates, fighting off tackles, and he takes it inside. Grambling State Territory, Zaire Wilburn on the tackle. A gain of 23 for Coates. Yeah, Bob, you're talking about up front for, for, for uh, Southern. You see DeMarcus Russell, number 75, right there in the middle of the field. He's the one with the high angle spray, but he opens up that hole for Coates. And the next guy there is the safety, Jack, who can't make the tackle. So first and 10 for Southern. Drive started at their own 20-yard line. Lee's going to swing in the flat and a big hit on Lee Van White. By the safety to Michael Dyser, the senior from Sterlington, Louisiana, a therapeutic recreation major, 42nd tackle of the season. Yeah, and Southern's had some trouble. We talked about the offensive line already, but they've had some trouble, so expect to see them run these quick screens and on screens to keep the, the, the Grambling defense off balance, and Dyser sniffs this one out right away. Loss of three on the play. It'll set up a second and 13. For the Jaguars of Southern, opening possession of the ball game. Bryant Lee, the MVP of the Bayou last year. Lee across the middle. Jamaria Stewart's got it, fighting off defenders, and he takes it down to the 32 and another first down for Southern. For Stewart, the sophomore from Baton Rouge, his 20th catch of the season. And that time. Gremlin had no one in the middle of the field and no safety in the middle of the field, so they were man coverage all the way. You see, no one in the middle of the field deep for Grambling. And Stewart comes underneath. Should have been man coverage. There was a ball coverage there. So a pickup of 18 on the play. Coates in the backfield as Lee has started off hot. Coates right up the middle again. Coates dropped by Dyser and Jack, but another first down for Southern. 
Kaiser got the initial hit. Jack cleaned it up. Gained a 16 for Coates. Hey, Bob, when you talk to both of these teams, the strength of Grambling is their upfront coach. And they are just not getting the job done right now. Southern's doing a great job of opening up holes for Coates. And, and, and this has got to be some concern for Grambling because that's the strength of their defense. Coach checks out of the ball game on a first and ten. Kendrick Smith is in a tailback. Smith on the inside run. Nice his way down to the 11-yard line. Dropped on the play by Christian Anthony. Gain of seven on the play. And now Coates will come back in for Pete Richardson. Coates has gotten off to a good start. He said last year's Bayou set the tone for him. This year, this is his last game. He said, I want to go have some fun. I'm not thinking about my last college game. I want to go have fun. I'll reflect upon it after the game. Second and three. Coates picks his way. And he's got the first down. He moves the pile to the six-yard line. Melvin Matthews grabbed him around the waist and brought him down, but a good start for Darren Coates. It's a good start for Southern all the way around. Brian Lee is just perfect in the passing game, and Coates is just been eating him up, and that offensive line is moving him out for Southern. Seven plays, 75 yards. That's over 10 yards of play. Now Southern has started off slowly this year in some of their games, and they get off to a quick start. Here's Lee on the run. Lee's shoulder down by Anio, but he's inside the two down one out the one. Very effective game plan right now for the Southern Jaguars. Yeah, the Southern has been good in the first drive. It's the first quarter as a whole that they haven't been very good in maintaining what they do in that first drive. They go to a traditional eye. Brian Threets the fullback. Coates the tailback. Coates on the carry. He's in for the touchdown. And Southern with a very impressive 80 yard drive strikes first here in the 34th State Farm Bayou. They just took it right at Grambling State's defense. Yeah, that's a perfect end to a, a great drive that was really the, the, that offensive line by Southern just set the tone early, moving them out. Coach gets across the goal line, and Grambling has to be careful not to get a penalty here. Coach with four carries for 45 yards. He doesn't lose any yardage for that. <laughs> Once he's in the end zone, it's official. And, and the, I say the grandma has to be careful not to get a, a penalty on that kind of play. Freshman Josh Duran in for the extra point. Snap is good. And Duran knocks it through. So Darren Coach has scored a touchdown his last year's Ryan. Knocks this one in from the yard out. Four carries, 45 yards, and a touchdown. The Jaguars of Southern strike first. They have a 7 0 lead here in the State Farm Bayou Classic. The State Farm Bayou Classic is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of black college football games. By the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. And by State Farm. State Farm is proud to be the title sponsor of one of the most legendary games in the country. The St. Louis Cathedral here in New Orleans. And the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic off to a big start for Darren Coates and the Southern Jaguars. As Coates able to run it in from one yard out, capping off a nine-play, 80-yard drive. Coates had four carries for 45 yards on the offensive line. Dominated for Southern. Yeah, Brian Lee was perfect three for three in that drive. Another testament to the play of the offensive line. Josh Duran, short kickoff. Now we get a whistle and a flag offsides on Southern. Not what you want to do after an impressive scoring drive. Rod Broadway's squad could not stop Southern. On uh, that opening drive. Now let's see if his offense can do something against Pete Richardson's defense. Now referee is George McCullum. He'll get on the officials every now he and then. He will get on the officials every now and then. Tavares Hills and Clyde Edwards are back deep for Grambling State. Hills to your right, Edwards wears number five to your left. Edwards averaging. 24 yards in return. So Duran, the freshman, will send this one high and short. Edwards from his own 16. Edwards has breakaway speed. Edwards to the 40 before he's driven to the turf. Well, Brandon Landers has had a very good season under the new system of Rod Broadway. 
20 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. As we take a look at our starting lineups, powered by AT&T, the new AT&T, your world, delivered. They have three freshman running backs. Frank Warren has four rushing touchdowns on the season. Tavares Cockrell is the emotional leader of the offensive line. Landers said that it's Cockrell who makes a lot of the calls, and he gets everybody fired up. Landers on a beautiful play fit. Landers over the middle, and he hits Edwards to the 49-yard line of Southern. As we take a look at the Southern defense, Vincent Lands leads the way up front, eight sacks on the season, 21 and a half sacks for losses. Jonathan Malvo is the middle linebacker, 63 tackles on the season, and a pair of New Orleans natives at safety, Jamal George and Glenn Bell. They're roommates, they're fire and ice, they complement each other so well. They're the big play threats. They've combined for seven interceptions this season. On the inside handoff, this is the freshman Warren, who averages 4.8 yards a carry. He picks up about 12, and another first down as Glenn Bell made the tackle. You know, we talked about Rod Broadway in the open and what he's done with this Grambling State team. Already you see a tight end, that's 80. Abney, the tight end in Grambling's offense right now, haven't seen that. You see already a more controlled offensive scheme coming from Grambling, a much different look than the past few years. You know, we talked with Glenn Bell, the safety, yesterday. Asked him, do you think they'll try to pass on first down even though they've shown a lot of runs? He said, I wouldn't be surprised if the buy it. Reginald Jackson, the motion man on first and 10. Landers finds Jackson, who shouldered out of bounds at the 31-yard line. And this As Joe the, Manning knocked the, him out. And this is the kind of play that Grambling is going to do a little bit different than they've done in the past, with Jackson coming underneath and just going in the controlled passing game. You see receivers flushing out, and then Jackson just right in front of you, right? Makes the nice little outcut for the five-yard gain, seven-yard gain. It's the kind of offense that they have run this year that's been very effective. On a second down, Grambling State. The snap goes over the head of Landers, and he gets dropped back by Bell as he falls on the football back at the 38-yard line, loss of seven on the play. It's a high snap by Crockwell. You wonder if he had something on his nose because he just fired that ball back there. Landers didn't seem like he was ready for it. Crockwell is a four-year starter at center. For Grambling State, you don't see these kinds of mistakes very often from him. He is, he is, one of, he is the team leader on offense. Criminal justice major from Parker High School in Birmingham, Louisiana. So third and 11 for Landers and Grambling State on the short end of a 7-0 score here in the first. Warren to the left of Landers. Blitz is on. Landers finds Edwards. Takes it down to 28. He's about a yard short of the first down. Malvo got the stop. And this is exactly what Grambling wanted to do as they pick up the blitz. You'll see it coming from the left side of the screen. That's Bell there, the, the safety, number five. He's going to come up. They pick up the blitz very nice, and there's, there's the guy right there. He's going he's to sit right in that hole in that seam on the zone blitz. Second catch for Edwards, and Grambling State's going to go for it here on a fourth and one. Warren is the tailback in an offset eye. Warren's got the first down and more than 25, and he's knocked down by Bell and George. But Coach Broadway, in his first by he goes for it, and the offensive line pays dividends. And he, and he went to a guy that, that was really a late addition to this team, Reginald Warren. And you see the play, the trap play by the offensive line there. Reginald Warren, a tough runner, true freshman from Grambling State. Coach Broadway was telling us that after spring practice, he cut 44 players in changing the culture and the attitude of the team. So you can find a lot of guys late. Warren was one of them. Jackson in motion. Landers out of the gun. Warren's got the edge. Accelerates inside the 20. And knocked down by Bell. A yard short of the first down. A more balanced attack is what we're seeing from Grambling State here. Out of the shotgun. Going with Warren, this true freshman running back, he shows the speed to get to the outside. Because of the success of Warren, you've seen a team that is more relying on the run game, especially here in the red zone, where they like to split things out. Use the balance attack, four rushes and three passes, second and one. Edwards in motion. Warren on the handoff, he's got the first down, dragged down from behind. Number 23. By Wesley King, a redshirt freshman. For Southern, his 12th tackle of the season. King, 265 pounds. Part of that young defensive front, with the exception of Lance. But you've got Dwayne Charles and King. 
and some reserves who have a lot of youth on the southern side. So first down for Grambling State. Warren the tailback. Edwards in motion. Landers in trouble. He just throws it away. And the pass incomplete. He was under pressure that time from Gary Chapman, a sophomore from Houston, Texas. He's played very well for Pete Richardson. Yeah, the left side of the screen is Chapman number 35. You're going to see him right here. He's going to come in and stay at home. He's going to play patient. He comes up the field, doesn't, doesn't follow the play. It's a nice play by Chapman to force Landers into the throwaway. Chapman along with Brian Lewis, two young linebackers. Lewis, a redshirt freshman. Chapman, a sophomore. Chapman from Houston, Texas. The second down. And 10. Landers. Stopped at the four. Open field tackle by Glenn Bell. Third catch of the ball game for the very talented Clyde Edwards. Yeah, yesterday we asked Landers who his favorite receiver is and what's his favorite route. And pretty much it was anything that Edwards was doing. And here in a press situation down by the goal line, he had a lot of confidence. Three for five. Clyde Edwards holds the Grambling State record with 36 career touchdown receptions. He can set a few more records today. Third and three at the four. Warren the tailback. Warren on the inside dives ahead near the marker. It's close. As Joseph Selders fell on him. And he is right near the first down marker. We saw Rod Broadway go for it on fourth and a full yard earlier in this drive. They converted it on the run to Warren. And they are short of the first down. They need a little less than a yard. It's like they're bringing, in, they're bringing in the big heavies. We've got Hills and Edwards and brought in a couple extra offensive linemen. They're going with the big set. They're going for it. Yeah, William Nance, number 73, is in the backfield with Warren. And Walker. Landers has got the first down. And he's near the goal line. No signal. He's just short, but it'll be first and goal for Grambling State. Went right behind their force on the offensive line. Tavares Cockrell. Yeah, and that's showing confidence in, in your senior, senior Cockrell right up front. The Southern guys are waving, no way, no way, but it looks like he's got enough for right that there. first down. Little push. You see that ball right there? Just enough to get the first down. I think the, the Southern guys may not have been aware that, that this was a first down shot. This wasn't going for the touchdown. You know, at number 73, backup defensive lineman, William Nance. Watch this. He pushes Landers from behind. And Nance is a 300-pounder. That was enough to get Landers past the marker. I think any time you get a 300-pounder behind you, it'll get you It'll get you there. They asked for the measurement, and Grambling State has converted their second fourth down on this drive for Rod Broadway. Rolling the dice, and with 6-12 to go here in the first, now he has a first and goal inside the one, looking to tie this ball game. Yeah, Rod Broadway talks about discipline. He talks about a more methodic approach, but showing his team going for it on fourth down on, on this first drive, showing his team that he's going for the victory here. He's going to take some chances. All right, he's got Walker, number 27, Nance, the defensive lineman, and Warren in the backfield. First and goal inside the one. Tie the game. It's Walker, the freshman, in for the touchdown. Cornelius Walker, the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia, his fifth rushing touchdown of the season, and the freshman backs help run Grambling State to an equalizing score. And I think if you're a Grambling State fan, you have to be pleased with this opening drive and what they've done, especially running the football. It's not what Grambling's been known for, and they went right in the strength of that defense and, and powered through with, with, with the, again, another freshman running back for Grambling State. And how about Nance just blowing up the middle linebacker, Malvo? Extra point for Manuel. 28 of 33 on the season, and he knocks it through. And with 5.59 to go here in the first, we are knotted up at seven, but we have a flag. Hold on one second. You know, some of the Grambling State players have their cleats spatted in yellow tape, so it almost looks All like a flag. Number seven, on the defense, killing with decline. Good. Penalty was on Michael Williams of Southern. Decline as we watch Cornelius Walker follow the big defensive lineman William Nance to the end zone. Power football on the Grambling State Tigers as Rod Broadway gets the equalizing touchdown. Not at seven here at the Bayou. The
State Farm by you, Classic. State Farm, like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Southern and Grambling State tied up at seven apiece as Cornelius Walker runs one in from one yard out, a 13-play, 61-yard drive. And Don, both teams have been very effective offensively here in the first quarter, running the football. As Tim Manuel will kick it off for Grambling State. Albert Turner. Ball going into the end zone. He'll start from his own 20-yard line. Well, don't forget, coming up at halftime, it's the Southwest Airlines Battle of the Bands. Grambling State and Southern warming up for the Bayou after this. Well, the Southern Jaguars gave their cheerleaders a lot to cheer about on their opening drive as they went 80 yards for a score. Grambling State and Southern knotted up at seven apiece. Southern with the football. And Lee able to hit Gerard Landry, his senior receiver, for eight yards on the play. Yeah, and Southern came out on fire this, this first drive of the game with the short screens to Turner and then opening up on the offensive line for Coach, those big holes on the front. But then they did it well with short passing game up the middle. It's a great catch up the middle, but then that offensive line was the key to that first drive, allowing them to do all the different things they wanted to, to control the clock and a nice steady drive down the field. On a second down, Coates on the inside run, sheds a tackle, gets across the 30 before he's knocked down on the play by John Carter. Coates on the first drive, four carries, 45 yards, and the Southern touchdown. Like in his final collegiate game. And he's really become a threat out of the backfield as well, Don. Yeah, he likes to catch the football. I asked him yesterday, how does he like to get it as, as a true running back? Anyway, just get me the football. On a first and 10 for Lee from the 31. There's Coates with his 46th catch of the season. Picks up about three on the play as he's knocked down by Christian Anthony, the sophomore. Anthony. Very impressed with both of these quarterbacks so far, taking what the defense is giving you. The underneath passes, trying to get the ball into your playmaker's hands as quickly as possible. It's very impressive by both teams so far. Coach was telling us he worked with Elvis Joseph, a former Jacksonville Jaguar and player for Southern, who's in his first year as a part-time assistant as far as catching the ball in the offseason. Stewart had it straight, but it goes right out of bounds. And the ball will be kept by Southern. Christian Anthony came in with the chop and knocked it out of the hands of Jamarius Stewart. But Southern maintains possession. That's a great play by Christian Anthony, who's a defensive end. He's gotten all the way into the secondary in the big chop. The heads up, it's a heads-up play all around. Sean Jacobs fell on it for Southern, although the ball was going out of bounds anyway. On a first to ten, Lee, and then we'll get some flags. And check the penalty. Get a look at Jason Banks, who might have been a bit anxious. And if I was Jason Banks, I'd be a little anxious too. Southern has really been grinding the ball, especially in this front. And that front from Gramley came in as the strength of this defense. They really have not shown it so far. Prior to the snap. All sides, 95, defense, five-yard field. So Banks with the penalty. We talked with Jason yesterday. He said we want to make Southern one-dimensional, set the tone early. But so far, it's both offenses that have really set the tone. On a first and five for Lee. As the four receivers set Turner to the bottom of your screen. Instead, they're going to run it on the inside. Another freshman running back. That's Andrew Smith. And he knocks his way to the 49-yard line as we send it down to the sideline of Lewis Johnson. You guys were talking about uh, the way the Grambling defense is playing, but maybe not having enough tenacity there at the uh, line of scrimmage. After Southern's first run down the field for a touchdown, Rod Broadway came back to talk to his defense, took his headset off, got on the knee, and said, listen, we need more penetration and some greater intensity at the line of scrimmage to try and slow him down. Let's we'll see what happens here as this drive continues. See if they can get after Lee, who fakes the handoff to Coates. Lee shoots a pass to the 38 and completes it to Cleveland White. A redshirt sophomore from Napoleonville, Louisiana, to Michael Dyser on the tackle, game of 11. Yeah, this is going to be a nice job. Cleveland White's going to come from the left side of your screen. You see the, the play action fake keeps the linebacker, and Lee's just going to fit right in that nice seam in the middle of the football field. That run game for Southern has really opened up the play action pass game. Lee, seven for seven in the ball game. First and 10. Lee 
This time he gets thrown down for a loss of a couple. Donald Williams, a senior from Birmingham, is part of the defensive line rotation, makes his 18th tackle of the season, a criminal justice major from Parker High School in Birmingham. So it'll be second and 11 for Lee. He sends Coates to the slot. Landry, his big target, to the bottom of the screen, split right. Blitz is on. Lee has Landry, who makes a gorgeous one-handed catch, and he's knocked out at the 12-yard line. The senior from Convent, Louisiana, with a gorgeous one-handed grab and a 29-yard pickup. Hey, Bob, you're not going to see a better catch than this in college football anywhere else. Lee, the big receiver, a one-handed grab on a bullet that was thrown by Bryant. That was Randy Moss. <laughs> You'll see him tomorrow night on NBC against the Eagles, but saw Moss have a couple of one-handed catches against the Colts a couple of weeks ago. First and 10 for Southern. Lee now eight for eight with a little help from Landry. Coates on the run, finds a crease, and then it gets shut down for nine yards on it as Dizer came up from the safety spot to dive in. You know, going back to that big catch by, by Gerard Landry, when we talked to Brian Lee yesterday, we asked him, is there a situation that you want to see Gremlin get in that you know you can take him? He said, when they blitz, because when they do, they make themselves vulnerable. He had to look for the site, site adjustment, and that was Gerard Landry on the quick slant. And a great catch by Landry for the big completion. And Landry's been playing with a really bad left ankle. He's needed an air cast during the week. Epsom salt and vinegar, he says, has been part of his rehab. Coach, wide open. It's a flag for the slam dunk against Coach, and, and that's going to get Pete Richardson awful, awful angry. This is a team that, that has shown this kind of lack of discipline earlier in the year with, with dumb penalties, and here's just another one that's going to get him get him going on his young running back, Coach. You saw him ask, who was that on? One of the assistants said, Coach, Coach. Coach's fifth receiving touchdown of the season. We have a touchdown. After the touchdown, Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 43, will kick it on the kickoff, 15 yards. Well, Coach told us that he wanted to have fun and really savor this last collegiate game. And so far, he's having a blast with both touchdowns for Southern. Josh Duran for the extra point. And Duran just gets it through. Right to the tip of the line to kick the knuckleball. But the freshman nails it at Southern in front 14-7. Yeah, and you know, this is what, what Southern has wanted to do all year long is get those guys running in space. And there's Coach, the outstanding running back, not only in, between the tackles, but also in the secondary as a receiver. Brian and Lee. And quarterback is loving it. Southern with the early lead in a wide open bye. That PAT for Southern barely made it through the uprights, and here's the reason why, is that guy right there, Donald Williams, gets a hand on the football. You see him come in and get that right hand up and just gets the football, making that PAT a very, very close conversion. Bramley State's defense has been unable to stop Southern. Back-to-back 80-yard -back drives as Darren Coates with the receiving touchdown, but then he spiked the ball over the goal post, so Southern will have to kick off from their own 15-yard line. Tavares Hills on the return from his own 22. Hills to the 41-yard line. He's brought down right there, but good field position for Grambling State. Well, neither team has been stopped. In fact, Southern hasn't even faced a third down yet. Jaguars with a seven-point lead. Be sure to tune in for the Southwest Airlines Battle of the Bands halftime performance. Don, it's always a lot of fun to watch the two bands compete. Everybody has their opinion. And if you know anything about the Bayou, the band is sometimes bigger than the game. I don't think it's any different this year. 
Should be a lot of fun coming up at halftime. You'll see it. Southwest Airlines is proud to be the title sponsor of the Southwest Airlines Battle of the Bands. And we have a little wrinkle this year. I'll tell you more about it a little bit later. But you, the fans at home, are going to get a chance to vote. Bramley State out of first and ten. Lander finds Reginald Jackson for a gain of 11 on the play. Well, the Battle of the Bands, you get a chance to vote for your favorite band. Text your choice to 51515. Text G for Grambling State, S for Southern. Standard text messaging will apply. So you have been voted off the island, Don, yeah, as taking, far as your away the vote here my, at halftime. Yeah, the power of my vote. On a first and ten. Edwards. Clyde Edwards! 50 footwork, but they say he was out of bounds. Play is being blown dead back at the 38-yard line. Edwards says, are you kidding me? And Edwards is in disbelief, but let's take another look and see if Edwards stepped out. It was a nifty move there in the corner. He's going to cut back inside, and I don't know about it. That would be put right down. there. He's out of bounds. Good call by the officials. And that's the kind of play that, that you know, when, when you want to sell an offense to a quarterback, and, and Rob Broadway told the junk quarterback, we're going to do those little things, we're going to take those little chances, and I guarantee you the big things will happen. And that's the kind of play that happens, that he can sell this offense to his young quarterback. And there is no replay here at the Bayou Classic, official review. So second and four for the Tigers. Play clock was at zero. That's a delay of games. Landers wanted the snap. You know, one of the things that, that Gremlin State really had to work on, and James Spade, their new offensive coordinator. Actually, the referee gave Gremlin State the timeout. I look back to the flag. We see Pete Richardson. They're picking up the flag. So Landers got the timeout. So with that said, we've got a timeout. Grambling State looking for the equalizing touchdown in a wide open Bayou Classic. Sometimes I think grown-ups have more fun than kids. They get to do cool stuff, like go on cruises. And ride motorcycles. My mom and dad travel all over the country to see their favorite band. My grandpa went back to school and actually likes it. Yeah, grown-ups have it made. They get to play whenever they want. And the best part is when they spend time playing with me. And me. And me. First year, Grambling State head coach Rod Broadway has brought a new attitude to the Grambling State Tigers, and he said he had to make some hard choices in the offseason. And so we didn't invite 44 guys back to camp. We went out and found 44 more guys that was going to give us a chance and an opportunity to win. And, um, you know, either lack of talent, lack of effort, lack of attitude, you know, for whatever reason, we thought we could uh, move on. And that's what we did. We had to make a statement to the football team in the direction we wanted to go and with the type of people that we wanted to travel with. He told us that there were a lot of walk-ons. They found Cornelius Walker, a freshman who had been unsigned, who they brought in. Speaking of Walker, Walker with a big run inside the 25 and the 24. Michael Williams on the tackle. So the freshman from Atlanta with a big run. And you, you talk about bringing in a new system and new guys like Walker. You need the guys to come in who are going to buy into this program. You see another trap play by Grambling State. This has got to be a big surprise to anyone who hasn't seen Grambling all year long. This has become a running powerhouse this year for Grambling State. And the players on Southern told us yesterday, we know the trap is coming, but right now they're falling into it. First and ten. Walker in the backfield. Landers checks down to his tight end. And a short gain on the play. You know, we saw that timeout a, a while ago, a player go from Grambling State, and it could have been a communication problem. And when Broadway came in here, he changed a lot of things. That's why he got rid of a lot of kids, because he wanted people to buy in. And one of the biggest things they did on offense is that they went from a number system and how they call plays to a, a naming system. So each play has a name. There's a little bit more verbiage in the offense right now, but that's the kind of system that he ran, and that's the kind of system he sold to these players. So I saw a lot of good players he needed some direction and being taught how to win. On a second down, Landers under pressure. Sacked by Lands. Vincent Lands gets his ninth sack of the season with some help up front from Frank Henry. Loss of 11 on the play. And Lands is 
just a tenacious defensive line who gets a good push up the field. And Landry went with the shortest set out of the drop back. And there's Lance, 33, who just makes the speed move. His ninth sack of the season. Some exciting plays so far here in the first quarter. After one, Southern leads Grambling 14-7. We'll return to the State Farm Bayou Classic after these messages from your local NBC station. Tonight, it's a special time for family and friends and a new Saturday Night Live. We're in New Orleans. Look at the French Quarter for the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic. Bob Papa and Don McPherson. Southern with the lead as we get set for the start of the second. Let's head it down to field side of Darren Horton. Thank you very much, Coach. You're up by a touchdown. What do you like about what your team's done so far? Oh, we're playing with a lot of enthusiasm, but uh, we're giving up too many big plays, especially on first down. All right, let's go back upstairs, Bob. All right, uh, Grambling State's been able to move the ball, but right now the Tigers of Grambling State will face a third and long after the land sack as we start the second quarter. Landers, quick catch behind his tight end, Tim Tapley. Well, Coach Broadway in his first bye, he's with Lewis Johnson. All right, thanks, uh, Coach. I know you're trying to engineer a drive here, but defensively, what's your concern in terms of trying to slow down Southern? Well, well we're not tackling very well, and we've had about four or five long curves right now. So we've just got to get focused on uh, alignment and assignment right this uh, this time. All right, Coach, we'll let you get back to it. Thanks, Bob. All right, and on a fourth and 21, Tim Manuel is going to come in for our first punt of the ball game. Manuel's not 15 inside the 20. He'll angle it to the right and pooch it along the sideline. But we'll have to check the angle and see if he got as much out of it as he would have liked. Official continue walks up the sideline and they'll spot it out at the 16 yard line. Let's take a look at our State Farm first quarter statistics. And you see that the rushing numbers have been solid for both teams. Southern's done a little bit better job passing as Lee is nine for nine in the ball game, Don. Yeah, I think that's been the difference on, on those third and medium and third and long. Lee has done a nice job of, of getting first downs in the pass game. And if you go back to that last drive, I think that's what, what stalled for, for Grambling State. They didn't pick up the blitz and didn't get the pass game going. And that's been the strength of Grambling over the years. Today's stats brought to you by State Farm. For your insurance and financial needs, call a neighborhood State Farm agent today. First and 10 for Lee, and he's now 9 for 10 as he can't hook up with Cleveland White. For an injury update, let's check in with Darren again. Yeah, Bob, uh, DeMarcus Stewart, the Southern starting center, has re-aggravated a right calf injury. He missed a couple of games earlier this year with the same injury, so there's a new starting center in there. Daniel Stevens will be snapping the ball for the Jaguars. Back upstairs. All right, Stevens is a sophomore from Baton Rouge, Glen Oaks High School. Six foot two, 290 pounds. Southern's two previous scoring drives, 80 yards apiece. Lee on a second and 10 behind Landry. And it completes the two passes by Lee after the hot start, nine for nine for 92 yards. And he missed fires on his first two passes here in the second. Yeah, and that time Lee's gonna look, if you're gonna look, you're gonna see a whole bunch of guys right here in this zone area right there. Too many guys in the same area. There was no one really to be able to focus and throw the football to. He sees he's got Carter 47 right in his face, so he knows he has some sort of pressure. Somebody's got to break the route off and get open. First third down attempt for Sutton. Coach, well read by the defense. As they hear Wilbur, and the linebacker was there to make the tackle after a gain of only a yard. Yeah, Nigel Copeland makes a nice play on the outside. Number eight right there. He's going to come up really fast and, and make the play on Coach Fulton. Coach back inside to the defense. Nice inside-out pursuit by Nigel Copeland. And Wilburn, who is playing linebacker, says he likes playing safety better, but the coaches say, I'm always around the ball, so I'm ready for it. He says he gets a better running start at the tackle at the running back coming from the safety position. Clyde Edwards back deep. The freshman Duran, the punt, just gets it away. Good kick, though. Sending Edwards back to his own 33. Edwards to the 45. They'll give him the 46-yard line. 51-yard punt, 11-yard return. So, Grambling State trailing by seven, gets the football back, trying to tie up the Bayou Classic. I think Coach Robinson, not what he meant to me, but what he meant to the black 
communities throughout the country. I grew up with a lot of respect for Grambling football, and back then, Grambling and Notre Dame were the two universities that you heard about. I think, uh, you know, when you meet Coach Robinson, he's a man of terms. He never had a bad thing to say about anything. He had a passion for the game. He loved coaching football, and he loved teaching the American youth. I've said a thousand times to anyone that will listen, Coach Rob and the boys, they were 30, 40 years ahead of their time. This Coach's Moment brought to you by Ford. And I think it's a very special thing that, that is going on right now with, with Eddie Robinson. And uh, you'll see Coach Broadway give Eddie Robinson's wife a kiss. And, and I think it's, it's just a, such a special thing that's going on here at Grambling with, with everyone, or not just here at Grambling and, and here in, in Louisiana, but around the nation, uh, just showing such great respect and honor to Eddie Robinson. It's been, a, it's been such a, a pleasurable experience being here and listening to players and coaches alike talking about the impact that he's had on their lives. On a first and ten, Warren picks up three on the play. We talked about Doris Robinson, high school sweethearts, married for 66 years, a true love affair. As said, they they fell they fell in love in, in the sixth grade, was it? And it's been the two of them ever since. They ran across the river, got married. It, and uh, have been together right up until the time of his death, and, and just a, a wonderful, wonderful example. It's part of what they did the whole time. They led, led by example, and he led by example his entire career and his entire life. Oh, yeah, yeah. Second and seven. Warren trying to find the outside edge. It's a block from Martinez, and he's dragged down by Gary Chapman, the linebacker. And there you see on the helmets, both teams wearing, that's a southern helmet. With Eddie G. Robinson right there on, on the back and, and his record 408 wins is, is just such a special thing when you talk about the rivalry of this game and we know how big it is for, for both schools and, and for both communities, but uh, they come together under the name of Eddie Robinson. It's just been, been such a special experience. Brandon Landers called the service for Coach Robinson, more of a celebration, although he never had a chance to really sit down and talk with him. He said it was a celebration of a great man's life. On a third down, he can't find Jackson. And it's incomplete. For more on Coach Robinson, let's head to Data Lewis. No more adding more to what you were saying. Brandon Landers talking about that. Never having an opportunity to really sit down and talk with Eddie Robinson. But he remembers going by the house and singing the alma mater. And Coach Robinson appreciating that and just shaking the hand of what he called the icon. Landers said that meant so much to him as a, a man now wearing the G-Men's outfit as he goes. Brandon Landers has truly embraced the spirit of Grambling State in his role as the quarterback. Tim Manuel will punt. So after both teams scored, Southern on their first two possessions, Grambling State on their first low snap, and Manuel's able to get it away. Nelson's going to run it back off the hop. Nelson knocked down at the 17-yard line. 35-yard punt, four-yard return. Well, part of the tradition of Coach Robinson, the early wake-up call to get his players ready for a day's work. That's all he asked out of his players, a hard day's work and tremendous success over the years. The State Farm Bayou Classic is brought to you by the new 2008 Ford Focus with Sync, powered by Microsoft, by AARP. AARP is proud sponsor of the 2007 State Farm Bayou Classic. And by State Farm. State Farm is proud to be the title sponsor of one of the most legendary games in the country. Here in New Orleans at the Superdome, Southern with the football, and they have a 14-7 lead. All the scoring coming in the first quarter. Bryant Lee gives for Darren Coates. He has both touchdowns. Skips through the hole nicely. And then dragged down by Jeffrey Jack. As we set it down, Darren Horton with an NFL star. That's right. I've got Reggie Wayne of the Indianapolis Colts here who is from New Orleans. You've come, been coming to this game for a long time. Yeah, I've been doing this ever since I was a little kid, man. So uh, just to get back out here and just enjoy the festivity with a game at this, you know, caliber. It's always a good feeling. And I know you have family ties to, to both. Your, your dad played for Eddie Robinson, right? Yeah, he was, uh, I, when I was small, I heard plenty of Eddie Robinson stories, you know. So, uh, you know, my mom and dad went to Graham and my brothers went to Southern, so I'm kind of in the middle. 
Completed pass by the Jaguars. Who are you pulling for? I'm neutral, man. I'm kind of in the middle somewhere. Um, it's kind of hard. So I just like to stay in the middle and just stay neutral with it. You healthy? Oh, I'm 100%. I'm ready. All right. Let's go back upstairs, Bob. Yeah, Reggie Wayne last Sunday. They had a big win against Kansas City at home. Then on Thanksgiving night, they won in Atlanta. Now they have the weekend off. And then they'll return to work and get ready a week from this Sunday. They'll take on the Jacksonville Jaguars in Indianapolis in a key AFC South showdown. The Colts 9-2. and two. On a first and 10, Colts again dies ahead, picks up five, almost six yards on the play. Very impressive by Southern now with that back up center. Daniel Stevens in the, in the ball game. Coach is showing great patience as a running back, finding that hole, finding that seam, and seam doing a lot of zone blocking up front for, for, for Southern, which kind of helps that offensive line a little bit. They don't have to block a man, just block the zone and let Coach find that hole. Eight carries, 66 yards. He has a rushing touchdown and one receiving. Second and five for Lee. Lee on the handoff for Smith. Smith turns the corner, flag of the play. As he gets the first down, but let's see if we get a hold at the point of attack. Wilburn on the tackle, but we'll check the flag. It was interesting listening to Reggie Wayne talking about sort of neutral in this game. And it is a hold against Southern. When we talked with Coach Richardson, he said, this really is a family affair. People will drive down from Baton Rouge, and next thing you know, they'll head in opposite sides of the stadium, oh, root for their favorite team. On the offense, number 52, 10 yards from the previous spot. We played it down. Left tackle Trent Thomas. He said, you know, one household will come down and, you know, will come down to the game and then Mom will put on one jersey, Dad will put on the other, and for three hours... They hate each other. And I, in a sporting sense. And I think that Reggie Wayne just needed some place to go after the game. <laughs> he could not take a side because it's that fierce down here, and, and people know. They'll know if Reggie Wayne took a, made a pick. So after the holding penalty on Thomas, it'll set up a second and 15 for Southern. And now a timeout called by the Jaguars as they did not like the defensive look coach Richardson collection called the timeout you know both teams have played very clean this half we've seen a couple of penalties on on both sides but for the most part they have played very clean and, and you have to be impressed this is a different type of Bayou Classic than we've seen in, in, in the past these, both of these teams are, are playing very smart football Bradley State down by seven against Southern in the Bayou Classic something mycokerewards.com Today, but it kind of limbering up, getting ready for the big halftime show. Cheerleaders kind of urge on the Grambling State defense. Right now, Southern in front, 14-7 here in the second. Second and 15 for Southern. Lee with time, got hit as he throws, and it's deflected and nearly intercepted by Keith Hall. The hit from behind caused the errant pass. Christian Anthony got the pressure. Hall nearly had the pick. Near sack, near interception, Christian Anthony is going to come from the right side of the screen right there. He's going to be the one that puts the pressure on Lee, gets the deflection, and then Hall just, that's why he plays defense, can't catch the football, can't make the interception. And Lee was throwing into double coverage right here. Trying to squeeze it into a tight spot. So now third and 15 for Southern. Their first two possessions, two 80-yard scoring drives. They've struggled since. Lee steps up with time. Lee's pass deflected again, and Jack nearly had the interception. The flags come in, and it was Jeffrey Jack, the junior from Houston, there a hair too early. And that was a 
very late flag came in from very deep. Jack looked like he had a good jump on the football. George McCollum will have the call. And it is against Grambling State and Jeffrey Jack. Pass interference on a defense, number 44. Go from the spot of the foul, it's under 15 yards to the previous spot. They actually get it on the middle linebacker, Keith Hall, who nearly had the interception on the previous play. And there's Hall right in the middle of your screen, and he's going to come. I, I don't know. It's no, a, it is on very Jack. late. It, the, the call should have been on Jeffrey Jack. Well, there were three fours there for the officials to pick out. He picked out the, the double four. Lee going deep, overthrows his man, and it's intercepted. Aaron Brown, a junior from Zachary, Louisiana, gets his first interception of the season as Lee overthrew his intended receiver. First turnover of the ball game. Yeah, and Aaron Brown's never going to see an easy interception. Lee just floats that one up there. You see Gerard Landry way overthrown. He's trying to get him. He had him in the seam there. He's getting behind with the, the safety jack and he just let the ball go and failed on him. So Aaron Brown, a nickelback for the Grambling State defense, comes up with a big play and thwarts the drive by Southern. You know, that was the message all of the players as Lee heads to the bench. All the players of Grambling State said the one thing Coach Broadhurst has said, it's a 60-minute game. Keep playing. The try a run on first down, and it shut down nicely by Joseph Selders, the defensive tackle for Southern. And this has kind of been the story for Southern all year long, that they get off to a fast start, and then they can't keep it going. And, and that's when they've had the biggest troubles in the first quarter, even though they score early, twice this season, the first play of the game, and then they struggle. And they're looking at the right hand of Bryant Lee, the Southern quarterback. Second and eight. Warren, the tailback. Landers to throw. Finds Abney up to the 38-yard line, just short of the first down as we check in again with Lewis. All right, another great NFL wide receiver in the house today watching this Bayou Classic. Joe Horn, you spent seven seasons uh, in this building. I guess you're familiar with the Bayou Classic. Tell me about coming back and just kind of hanging out and watching. Man, it's always exciting to come back to Louisiana. So um, I had an opportunity. We played Thursday night. Coach gave us a couple of days off, so I had an opportunity to come back and play some golf with some friends and uh, come to the Bayou Classic. Well, you were in college. Were you aware of black college football at this level, and did you follow a classic like this one? Uh, I had attended one, but I, I was definitely aware of it because in college, in junior college, uh, coaches would send you letters and uh, black schools would send letters. So I was aware of, of, of the black college football and swag football, but I never got an opportunity to be a part of it. All right, Joe, good to see you, and we look forward to some more exciting antics after those touchdowns. Huh? Got what you got planned for this week? Oh, man. We'll see, man. Every, my, my children have a lot of things in store for me, so we'll see. So they're writing the script, huh? Absolutely. All right, Joe, good to see you. Enjoy the game. So happy holidays. All right, Joe Horn to the end zone to our right against the Giants on a Sunday night game. His cell phone in the goalpost support. tight end we talked about getting total buy-in from this team you're gonna see Abby number 80 he's right here he's right here he's going to be the guy who's gonna make this block he's gonna turn around on Chapman right there whack nice block by Abney who frees up cheek for the big first down gain of nine second and one Warren can't bounce off the tackle he'll lose a couple he ran right into Selders and we talked about the injury to the right hand of Bryant. That is Warren Matthews, a redshirt sophomore from here in New Orleans. He is the backup quarterback. He's thrown 39 passes this season, two touchdowns and no interceptions. They continue to check the right hand of Bryant Lee, the Southern quarterback. And I'll tell you why that ball sailed on him in the pass to, on the interception. Might have been for the previous play when he got hit. Big third down, third and three for Grambling State here in the second. Now we get a whistle and a timeout on the field. So big third down coming up for Brandon Landers and the Tigers as the Southern medical staff works on the right hand of quarterback Bryant Lee. We'll update you on it after this timeout. A 
on Southern's last offensive possession. Quarterback Bryant Lee got hit by Christian Anthony of Grambling State. We think this is where he suffered the injury to his right hand. Yeah, and that's what we, you see him go down. You're not sure exactly where it happens, but not a good sign. Let's go down to Darren Horton and get an update on the injury. Right, uh, you see they've wrapped his right hand. The injury is at the base of his thumb. It swelled up pretty good, but they've wrapped it. Now he's testing it out to see if he can still throw a football. That was actually the first pass he tried. So uh, it looks like he's going to be able to go back out there, guys. We'll keep abreast of the situation. Big third and three. Landers finds Jackson for a first down for Grambling State. Tackle by Michael Williams with a big third down conversion and a gain of 20. And Brandon Landers took a shot. You have to be impressed with this with this quarterback Landers as he's played in this system, requiring him to be a little bit more patient. He hung in the pocket there, took a shot. You're going to see him take it right here. Bam! He gets it from the big guy in the middle. Hard to see who that was. But Frank Henry. Frank Henry. And this guy, Jackson, has really come on this year as everyone's focused on Edwards. Jackson has been the go-to guy as everyone's double-teamed on, on Edwards. First to ten. Warren trying, can't get to the outside. Williams makes a spectacular tackle on the edge. The redshirt junior from Mississippi. He suffered an ankle injury in last year's bye. The team to see a good mix of run and pass from Grambling State. A lot of showing a lot of patience and a lot of poise in this offense. And you know when you look at these two freshman running backs for Grambling State, two guys that came out of nowhere. You have to wonder if they didn't emerge and take over the, the big load of Ab Quan, if this Grambling State offense would be as effective as it's been all year. So Lee trying to loosen up that hand. He needs his defense to get a stop. Second down. For Grambling State. Blitz is on. Landers gets it away and throws the interception to Williams. Michael Williams on the interception. And Williams dragged down at the 31 yard line. His third interception of the season as Landers took a shot and threw the pick. He doesn't see coming from the top of the screen. He doesn't see Manning. The free safety is going to come from here. He's going to come, from, come from, the, from the corner position on the blitz. Doesn't see it coming and takes it right in the mouth. And that opens up the big Eric pass for the interception. So Landers gets picked off as Williams was just sitting back in coverage. And not a good result. He's going to take it. He, just, he has got to get his eyes around and see it. That's the kind of blitz you need to see before the play happens. You need to recognize formation and, and, and front. You know that that blitz is coming. And, and here's the bad thing at the end of this play. Bell, the, the safety, see him number five there hobbling. He gets an ankle on this play. That's going to be a big blow for Southern defense. Manning with the blitz. Overthrows Abney Williams, who had three interceptions last year, gets his third here in 2007 for Southern. Bryant Lee gets his defensive stop. He's ready for some more action. And I would say that Bryant Lee is ready because I just saw him clap his hands. If your hand is hurt, you're not going to clap it. So I think he's ready to go. And Glenn Bell is able to walk off under his own power, albeit with a bit of a limp. So Landers gets picked off as he took a big shot for Manning. And here comes Bryant Lee with the hand wrap first to 10 from his own 30. Makes the handoff. He'll test out that wrap. Sails it, and he has Cleveland White. At the 42, picks up 12. Hey. John, you played quarterback. <laughs> you never, How do you play with your hand wrap? Well, if you ever want to test it, don't throw them out to the field from the, from the far hash. That's exactly what Lee did. He barely got that ball over the secondary. You, you, watch, you watch how this ball arcs and just barely gets over. I mean, he definitely does not have a grip on the football. You can tell by the way it's sailing. And he's just kind of shot putting it out there. He doesn't have a strong grip on it. So he's got to be very careful with the pass he chooses to throw. After a 9-for-9 nine nine start, Lee 3 for his last 8. Does the smart thing and gives it up for Coates, who picks up about 5 as we check in with Darren Horton. All right, Bob, real quick, it's a bruise of the thumb. And the problem is when he was warming up, some of his passes were sailing on him. He told the coaches that he was ready to go, so they're going to watch him closely this series. Back upstairs. Darren, are there certain routes that you can run to minimize the effect of that wrap? There, there really is. You want to try to keep the ball and, and keep receivers in front of you. Throwing those, those outs to the boundary are going to be a difficult pass to him. Second and five. Lee with time. Lee. 
throws Landry, who is wide open. And, and that's exactly the type of play that I'm talking about where you have your receiver coming back to you. You can control the football a little bit more, but you saw what happened there. You know, uh, Lee has a nice snap on the ball when he throws it, and there was no snap in that football. He barely got it out there to Landry, so you can tell if he doesn't have a strong grip on the football. Again, that thumb is the big, big key there. If he doesn't have a strong grip, he can't get that snap on the football. He's just kind of shot putting it out there. This would maybe quick slants to help him a little bit, exactly. get the ball out. Keep, keep the throws coming towards him. Third and five. Smith goes to the top of the screen in a slot. Lee with pressure. Lee gets sacked back at the 38 yard line. William Nance, who we saw him at play fullback earlier in the ball game, gets his second sack of the season, and that ends the Southern Drive. The biology major from Great Mills, Maryland. Yeah, you know, we, we talk about the snap of the football uh, if you don't have a good grip on it because of his thumb. You also don't want to pull the trigger right away. You want to be more tentative. He's going to be more tentative in the passes that he chooses to throw, and that's going to lead to more sacks. So after Southern scored a 280-yard drive on their first two possessions, their offense is stalled. Grambling State scored on their first possession. Their offense is stalled. Josh Duran, the freshman, who nearly had one blocked in the punt, takes a high snap and gets it away. Edwards from his own 25. Edwards. Chased down from behind by Coach. He avoids it. Now Edwards needs to block it. It could go. Edwards across the 45 to the 49-yard line. 36-yard punt. 23-yard return. William Nance gets a breather. He got the sack. Southern in front here in the second. Well, after the last series, Bryant Lee took the wrap off his right hand, suffered an injury to his thumb. Not able to snap the football, Don. Yeah, and you can almost see the swelling from here. And as you watch him warm up, you know, he's grimacing it with, with every little pass that he's throwing. And you can see him squeezing that hand. He's trying to pull the, get the swelling down by squeezing it. But that's, you know, you can just, you can just see he's not really doing a, a lot of a heavy throw right there. He's just doing a nice little lob, and he's still grimacing with every pass. First and 10 for Grambling State. They trail by seven. Land was picked off on his last pass. Then he gives it to Walker, who picks up nearly nine on the play. Ryan Lewis, the redshirt freshman linebacker on the tackle. The State Farm Bayou Classic. State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Southern with a 14-7 lead. They scored on their first two possessions of the ball game. Darren Coates with a run and with a reception. Grambling State scored on their first possession. They've not been able to use good field position. Limited to just seven points. Second and one. Walker again gets a big block. Walker slips on the turf and try to make a move on Manning. And there is a flag on the play. Gain of 10 will check the flag. Back at the line of scrimmage, so. Now both teams talked about coming in, holding penalty against Grambling State. Both teams talked about coming in and trying to keep the excitement down at the bayou. Don't get too, too far ahead of yourselves. And both teams with a pretty good run, run attack today. Hold it. On the offense, number 87, 10-yard penalty, replay the down. That's Corey Robinson, a freshman from Viejo, California, second tight end. Robinson's right, right here. Robinson's right there. He's going to get the hold coming down on the just to tries to turn him out, and it looks like Robinson's going to get in the hold and see the jersey come off. But he's going up against the big guy Lands. You, you have to think that. The guy wearing 87 is going to hold lands every time. That right arm was kind of extended, probably why he got the call. So second and 11, Landers zips it, completes it to Hills. And Hills able to pick up about 10 yards on the play, Manning on the coverage. Kavaris Hills, a junior from Clinton, Louisiana, came into the game with 17 catches and a touchdown. So set up a third and one for Grambling State. Closing seconds here of the second. Tigers trying to tie it up. Grambling State 8-2, 8-0 oh in the conference this year. Southern at 7-3, 5-3 in the conference. Landers on the inside handoff. And I don't know if they were able to get it. Dexter James, one of the defensive linemen, engulfed Cornelius Walker. Well, that was a nice job by Southern getting penetration on the trap play and just blew it up at the point of attack. 
James, a freshman from Louisiana, 6'4", 225 pounds. Part of the defensive line rotation. Now, we saw Coach Broadway go for it twice on fourth and one on the scoring drive for Grambling State. They were successful on both. He's going to think about it right now and uses a timeout. 2.37. Well, this is the, the point of the field where they used the pooch last time. But Tim Manuel didn't get much out of that. So it's a, a real good consideration. What do you do? Well, we talked about the Battle of the Bands coming up at the half. One of the many Bayou Classic traditions is the Friday Night Extravaganza, which features round one of the Battle of the Bands and a fraternity sorority step competition. A little taste of what the attendees got to see last night. Southern, the Sigmas, and the sorority winner came from Grambling State, the Zetas. Well, we talked about the Battle of the Bands coming up at the half. Darren has more. Darren? That's right, Bob. They're getting ready down here. Grambling State tries to draw Southern offside on this big fourth and one. Ready to go. Hey, hey, hey. Grambling State Band is in the lock of changing for their performance. Southern just going through their warm ups. Southwest Airlines proud sponsor of the Southwest Airlines Battle of the Band that's coming up at the half in that formation on a fourth and one. A huge play, Don, because they drew Southern offside and now Grambling State has a first down. Landers has Walker has his tailback. Landers looking deep for Edwards. He had him but missed him. Edwards had a step on Michael Williams, but a little too much air under that one. You know, Landers really has not been on the mark. We've seen him be much more accurate in the past. And he has got his guy, that's his guy, Edwards. He wants him wide open. He's got a man-to-man -man coverage on Williams and no one in the middle of the football field. There was plenty of room to pull him in any direction, and he just flat out overthrows his favorite receiver and his best friend on the team. So Edwards got free. He'll take a breather. Second and ten for Grambling State. Walker the tailback in this high set. Walker on the handoff. Tries to kick his way outside and gets thrown down to the ground by Jonathan Malbo, the middle linebacker. Limits it to a game of two. And there is another flag on the play. You know, talking to the Grambling State players, when you, when you talk about this control, uh, this controlled offense, you can see that they're sometimes they're a little impatient. They want to see the ball in the air a lot more. And I think that's one of the reasons why the rhythm for Grambling State is not there today. And there was no flag on the play. They picked it up, so it'll set a third and eight for Landers with the clock moving. Under two minutes to go here in the second. Grambling State trying to tie it up. Landers with time over the middle. Of the nicely and incomplete. The freshman, Ryan Lewis, the linebacker, had great depth in his drop, and he tipped the pass away. Yeah, really not a, a well-thrown football or even a smartly thrown football by Landers. There's plenty of action there in the middle of the field. You're going to see the linebackers drop into zone coverage, and the middle of the field is not the place to throw the football. There's one, two, three, four white jerseys in there. He should not be throwing the football there and looking outside, and great athletic play by Brian Lewis. So Tim Manuel comes in on a fourth down. And he will punt the football away. The 35-yard line. Manuel just zeroes it to the right sideline. Again, did he have the right angle as the official walks up the sideline and make his spot? Spots it at the 9. So Manuel does his job and has Southern pinned deep. Well, Sunday night, Tom Brady and the undefeated Patriots march toward history with their high-powered offenses. They head back to New England to take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Sunday night football night. It all begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, with football night in America, only on NBC. A.J. Feely 
re-signed this year by the Eagles, will start at quarterback with the injury to Donovan McNabb. They'll need a lot of Brian Westbrook. Lee remains in at quarterback. He'll run it. And Jack shoulders him down at the 20, but it's a gain of 11. Is that a busted player? You're running a guy with a bad hand. I think you want your, your leader in the ball game, but you want to protect him. You don't want him throwing the football down the field. You give him a chance to, to run with the ball, get a good play fake in, tuck the ball away. But you know you got to be careful with a guy with a bad hand. Number one, he's going to try to get it out there and give a stiff arm. But the other thing is, if he has to push it, push it, put his hand down to protect his fall, it's really not a smart play for a guy with a bad thumb. First and ten for Southern. Lee on the inside handoff. And they get a couple yards. Gave it to Coates. Christian Anthony on the tackle. You know, if Southern's offense looks a little bit familiar to people who've been watching uh, uh, West Virginia play and watching the Big East play, that's where a lot of this offensive scheme has come from, from West Virginia. And the, the Southern coaches spent some time down there at West Virginia. Their form, one of their former players, Calvin McGee, is an offensive coach at West Virginia. So you see a lot of the same kinds of plays, and it depends on that guy right there, Bryant Lee, making plays and being the engineer. And that's why he's in the ball game with a bad thumb. Second and seven, just give it to Coates. And he gets tackled after the game. A couple of Jason Banks on the tackle. Where your quarterback has a bad hand, and it's like Southern just kind of running out the clock here at the end of the first half. Yeah, and, and like I said, he's, he's the kind of guy, and this is the kind of offense that, that depends on Bryant Lee doing so many things in the past game, but also managing the game as a, at that quarterback position with the multiple t multiple things they can do. And so he's an important guy to, to have in the ball game uh, just because of his brain and his experience because he runs such a multifaceted offense. And Southern will take the lead to the mock here at the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic. They scored on their first two possessions. Darren Coates has both touchdowns for Southern. Quarterbacks hurt. Pete Richardson is with Darren Horton. That's right, Coach. 14-7. You have to be happy with the score. What do you like about what your team did in the first half? Well, I'm proud that we were able to run the football against them. I thought the down people on defense, especially the defensive line, was real strong. What about your quarterback? Obviously, he's got a thumb injury. How confident that are you that he can throw the football? Well, you know, we got to check it when we go in at halftime. It's, we've been in the swell, so we'll find out once I talk to the doctor. All right, Pete Richardson here at halftime, up by seven. Back up to you, Bob. Darren Coates with both touchdowns. We're at halftime here at the 34th Annual State Farm Bayou Classic. Pete Richardson's squad with a 14-7 lead over Grambling State. Stay tuned for the ADT NBC Sports Update, including the Southwest Airlines Battle of the Bands. Right after these messages and a word from your local NBC station. All right, Otis, thanks a lot. Welcome back inside the Louisiana Superdome as Southern leads Grambling 14 to 7. Well, it is halftime. Anticipation is building. You can feel the excitement because now it's time for the Southwest Airlines Battle of the Bands. And first on the field, the human jukebox of Southern.
is. Okay, yeah, Selman has made their statement and a powerful performance it was. We'll take a break and after the commercial send you to New York for the ADT NBC Sports Update. Otis Livingston is there with all the scores and highlights of the day. When we come back to New Orleans, Grambling will have their answer. So get your cell phones out and vote for your favorite band performance. Text your choice to 51515. Text G for Grambling and S for Southern. Standard text messaging rates will apply. We'll have the results of the poll after halftime. And when we come back, we'll have a report from Andrea Kramer on tomorrow night's Sunday night football matchup. That and more when we return. 
has been the ADT NBC Sports Update. ADT Security Services, the world leader in home and business security. And we're back in the Superdome in New Orleans for the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic at the half. Southern in front of Grambling State, 14 to seven. Bob Pop along with Don McPherson back here at the Superdome. And Southern got off to a very fast start. Two 80-yard drives to start the game, but the defenses for both teams really settled in. Yeah, the defenses have settled in for both teams. You've seen a lot of run game, more than we've ever seen in a Bayou Classic. Well, Darren Coach has done a good job running the football. As we take a look at the first half stats, they're brought to you by State Farm. Today's State Farm stats brought to you by State Farm for insurance and financial needs. Call a neighborhood State Farm agent today, and you see the running game for Southern, very crisp, led by Darren Coates. Time of possession fairly equal, and both teams have turned it over once. Yeah, and, and I think the time of possession is really not indicative of where the ball game has been. Southern has done a, a better job of controlling the offensive line. You see it in those 90 rush yards. They've gotten a lot of big plays, especially on first down from this offensive line at Southern, which is going to be a concern going into the second half with the injury to Jamarcus uh, Stewart, the center for, for Southern. All right, take a look at some of the defense in the first half, and they were able to get a lot of pressure. They used the corner blitz effectively with Manning. They used Chapman right here coming in on the blitz to get a sack of Landers or a forced throw away, but they've done a good job of pressuring the Grambling State offensive line. They really did, and you see right there that Grambling has to recognize where the pressure is coming from, and this one right here is on Brandon Landers. He has to see that blitz and get rid of the ball quicker, and that led to the interception. So Grambling has to do a good job, a better job, of recognizing where the pressure is coming from on Southern. What adjustments did Grambling State make? Head coach Rod Broadway is with Lewis Johnson. All right, Bob, that is the question. You had that hot first series where you scored and then things have cooled off. What happened there and how do you turn it around here in the second half? Well, we just got to execute a little bit better. I think our main problem right now, as I said in the first half, is alignment and assignments. We're not uh, executing our assignments like we should have, but hopefully this half we'll play a little bit better. I know you've been working on Brandon Landers to play within the system, not try to win the game. Give me your take on how he's done the first half. Brandon's playing pretty well. We've had some, we had a corner blitz that got us a little bit. We threw an interception. He has to break down his protections. That hurt us, but uh, overall I think he's playing well. All right, and do you think the guys are managing the excitement of this game? You said you've seen some uncharacteristic things so far. Well, you know, a lot of distractions when you come to a game like this, and we got to get our guys focused and tuned in on what we got to do as a football team. Thank you, Coach. Bob? All right, Coach Broadway in his first Bayou and his first year as head coach at Grambling State. Last year at North Carolina Central, he beat Pete Richardson in Southern 27-20. It was NC Central's first win over a SWAC team in their history. Josh Duran will kick off for Southern. They're in the white jerseys and white pants here in the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic. Duran, a true freshman from Louisiana. Grambling State had won the opening point toss and elected to defer. Edwards is back deep along with Kavaris Hills. Duran with a high kick. It'll come down to Edwards from his own 11. Clyde Edwards, a big play threat for Grambling State. Makes a couple men miss, turns his way to the outside and run out of bounds as he gets across the 35 up to about the 37-yard line. So once again, good field position for the Grambling State Tigers. Well, they have not scored since their first possession, but there is a flag on the field. That is back at about the 30-yard line where the kick occurred and was Southern offsides on the kickoff. Referee George McCollum checking with the Grambling State sideline. It's offside on Southern. Wants to know what Grambling State wants to do. They confer with the Grambling State, but now he's going to come on over and make the call. Offsides on the kicking team. Five yards, middle of the run, first down. It's one of those simple fives where they'll just tack it on rather than have the re-kick, so they'll spot the ball at the 44-yard line. Grambling all day long and, and started, started the game off and each drive very good field position. Frank Warren in the backfield. Landers the throw. Jackson gets a block. Jackson up to the 46. Then it's shut down in a hurry. Chapman, the sophomore from Houston, made the tackle. Chapman's had an active ball game. Yeah, very nice play by Chapman coming off the block and, and making the tackle. Like you said, he's been a very active ball player in, in this game. And 
from a defense that has, has not been like the, the defense in the past for Southern, but they've done a nice job today of keeping Grambling State out of the end zone. Grambling, again, going back to that conservative offense, waiting to see them open this ball up. Second and eight for Landers. Under pressure, gets hit again. Another blitz, and it is ruled incomplete. Again, Joe Manning, the junior, transfer from Florida State, came on the blitz, and he met at the quarterback with Vincent Lands. Yeah, and, and Manning came the long distance because they went with a little uh, protection and then slide of protection left, and Landers thinks he's going away from it, but when you stop your feet, you have to be aware of what's coming from the backside. Probably never even look to the, to the field on, at that time, and, and Manning just knows that. And again, Landers has to do a better job of recognizing fronts and, 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 and secondary so he knows where the pressure is coming from. Third and eight for Grambling State and Landers. Another blitz. They pick it up this time. Landers misfires and attempts to play nearly intercepted. As they sent another safety blitz, Glenn Bell came this time and got the face of Landers. And Southern is mixing everything up with zone blitzes. This time you get a little zone blitz. You have Bell, the strong safety, coming, and there's just no place to throw the football. And a tip ball might have cost Michael Williams his second interception of the ball game. And there's an injured player on the field. Looks like one of the offensive linemen for Grambling State will check on the number and take a timeout. It is the left tackle, Everett Edwards. The junior from Houston is down and hurt. We'll be back with more from New Orleans after this. Because I The State Farm Bayou Classic brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of black college football games. By Cheese It, the Big Cheese. And by State Farm. State Farm is proud to be the title sponsor of one of the most legendary games in the country. On a beautiful day in New Orleans, we welcome you inside the Superdome for the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic. Southern with the lead over Grambling State. And Grambling State drive comes to a halt. Here to start the third, Tim Manuel in the punt. Sends a booming kick. Nelson will watch it sail over his head into the end zone for a touchback. So Southern will start at their own 20-yard line. Don will take a look at the injury to Everett Edwards, the left tackle for Grambling State. Yeah, top of your screen, Edwards, Edwards the tackle is going to get pushed back by Lands, right back into Landers. And it looks like he got a, his right leg caught underneath Landers. And it took a lot of help to get him back up on his feet. You need to get more than just two people to help him up. Warren Matthews is in at quarterback for Southern. He gives it off to Darren Coates, who wiggles his way through a hole, picks up a couple. Christian Anthony on the tackle. For more on Bryant Lee, let's send it down to Darren Horton. Well, Bob, Bryant Lee, they tried to ice it down. That thumb, it's banged up, it's bruised. He could not grip the ball, really. They had to take him to the, uh, the Saints x-ray facilities. He's having x-rays. They think he might be able to go, but they wanted to take every precaution. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Matthews on a second down. He'll fire a pass, and he completes it to Albert Turner. And Turner picks up the first down, a gain of 12. Warren Matthews is a redshirt sophomore from here in New Orleans, and he hits on his first pass. Yeah, this is what Matthews is going to have to do. And get rid of the football very quickly, get it into the hands of your playmaker, this time Turner. But that's the kind of thing they're going to have to do with him, is move the pocket, protect him, and get him in a short passing game so you're not asking him to make the big play for you. Played at Warren Easton High School here in New Orleans. Two touchdown passes on the season. On a first and ten, he checks down and checks out is the running back Kendrick Smith as he just got leveled by Jeffrey Jack, the strong safety. And Jack a bit shaken up. Yeah, Jack may have hurt himself on that when he came up with the big hit. Grabbing that shoulder, that's never something you want to see, but you're going to see Jack at the top of your screen just close in on the back really quick now. Good form tackle, but that's how you hurt his shoulder. And he's making his way up pretty slow right now. Jack comes out of the ball game. It's a loss of a couple on the play. Second and 14 for Southern. Matthews out of the gun. Has some time to run with it. Chase down from behind as a late flag comes in. Christian Anthony has been all over the field. He's the one that collapsed the pocket, and then he chased down Matthews to drag him down. 
Matthews not a, a really oversized. You get the holding penalty against Southern. Matthews not a really oversized guy. But very fast and able to make we saw him make the play downfield earlier with the strip and fumble into the into the boundary. Holding on the offense. Number 77, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. That's the left guard Rafael Lewis, a redshirt junior. Civil engineering major. Call for the penalty. And I think you're going to see more of these kinds of penalties coming from Southern uh, with Jamarcus Stewart, the center, being out. And, and now with your quarterback being out, you're going to see more of these kind of penalties coming from Southern, especially up on the offensive line where you don't have your, your leader in there to get you in the right protection, in the right play call from the line of scrimmage. Second and long for Southern. And he 21 for the first down. He's not able to hook up with three man white over the middle, a little high on the throw. That'll set up a third and long to Michael Dyser on the coverage. And that was a tough pass. He had to really stick the ball in there if he was going to complete this. Sailed on a little high. I could have been caught though. Could have been caught. You're exactly right. A little behind him. Behind him and there aren't too many wide outs when that, when that ball goes up behind him over the middle like that. Want to keep those arms, those alligator arms come out really quick. All right, Matthews on a third and 21. That's plenty of time. Checks down underneath. And not much doing there for Jamarius Stewart as he gets stopped in his tracks after a short game. Dominic Johnson made the tackle. So the big holding call changed the whole texture of the drive. As Johnson, an electronics engineering major, made the tackle. And a good look for Matthews there to get a little, little action. Start to see the defense a little bit. And for the coaches to see what his what his comfort level was like so they can begin to game plan the rest of this game without the quarterback, Brian Lee. Clyde Edwards back here. Just waiting for him to break a big play. He ran the punt. Good height on the punt. And he's going to send Edwards all the way back. Great punt. Inside his own 15. He'll feel it. 12-yard line, no chance for Edwards. 56-yard punt by the freshman Josh Duran, too shy of his career long. Southern playing good defense and special teams as Matthews tries to figure things out. Southern in front. We live all the high-flying action from the thrilling. Southern quarterback Bryant Lee stayed in the locker room at halftime to have x-rays on his injured right thumb. And those x-rays being brought out to the field. Lee did not play in the last series for Southern. Looks Martin like Matthews was in a quarterback. It looks like they still might make a decision on it. They have the pictures in hand and they're going to take a look at it on the sideline. But Lee didn't charge out the field like he was ready to play. First and ten for Grambling State. Landers. With Walker in the backfield, he gives for the freshman Walker. Walker picks up a yard or two before he's dragged down from behind. Lands jumped on his back along with Dwayne Charles, the sophomore from Lafayette, Louisiana. Yeah, Bob, I agree with you. I think it's time for Grambling State to start opening up this ball game and play that old style football that we've seen from Grambling in the past. You know, they missed an opportunity in the first half. They had man on man coverage. They ran a deep post to Edwards and Landers, who had time, overthrew him. Those are ones you can't miss. Landers, under pressure, got hit as he throws. He just lobs it up and it's incomplete. Again, he got pressure, this time from his backside, and took a shot. Yeah, that was Joseph Selders who came on a little stunt to the outside. Selders is going to come from the left side of your screen after the stunt. Excuse me, right at the gut. And he and Brian Lewis met at Landers. Third down. Third and seven. Once again, Grandma State having protection problems. They have enough of the guys in there to protect it and just not getting it done. Everett Edwards is back into this left tackle spot. We saw in the last possession that Edwards seemed to hurt his ankle, but he is in at the left tackle position. Larry Curligan is now in at quarterback. Curligan, part-time quarterback, part-time running back, listed as athlete. Third and seven. Curligan. Edwards, slip screen, read beautifully by the Southern defense. The middle linebacker, Jonathan Malvo, was right there to sniff it out. You know, this is what, what Southern kind of expected Grambling to do, and 
pick and choose and get the short passing game going. And, and that time, when Carolyn comes in the game, you know that his options are going to be pretty limited. So they had a good idea what was going on. And like you said, Malvo just sniffed it out right from jump. So Kerligan with the short pass to Edwards, but well short of the first down. Manuel in the punt. Isaiah Nelson back deep. Manuel. Low kick. Takes a bad bounce by Grambling State standards, and it goes out of bounds at the southern 49-yard line. 31-yard punt. Great field position for the Southern Jaguars. All right. Now, Don, I know you've been using your phone at halftime. You've been texting like crazy. We want to thank everyone for voting in today's Battle of the Bands poll. You ready for the well, results? I'm, Come on, I'm yes. going to say Southern won by six percentage points. How about, oh, come on, you cheated. <laughs> what do you mean I cheated? Let me thank wow. all of those for wow. voting. Southern, 53% to Grambling State's 47, powered by NBC Sports Mobile. Check with me in November. Goodness gracious. <laughs> First and 10. Little option play on the edge. And they get it off to the fullback, Nicholas Benjamin. Jeffrey Jack made the tackle on the third carry of the year for Benjamin. You know, here's where you talk about special teams because you had the great punt by Southern and then the bad punt by Grambling, which puts Southern now on their side of the field and allows your young quarterback, Matthews, to get away with these kinds of things. You can shift up the offense. You don't have to get down the field in a hurry. This is a big, big plus for Southern in the special teams game. you have seen it right here. Coates in the backfield. Coates will take the hand up, picks his way up the middle. Coates dives inside the 35 and tackles at the 34. Zaire Wilburn on the tackle. Moments ago, Pete Richardson and one of his players off the field. You know, Pete Richardson earlier in the se season, you see that fire. You, you don't know, wonder about this guy signing a new contract just yesterday. He still has that fire to be an educator, and he still has that fiery competitive nature that brought from the NFL many years ago. Signed a new three-year deal. Second down, coach with blocking. He's got a first down and more inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Well, we had a chance to talk with Coach Richardson about him signing a three-year extension, already 15 years on the job at Southern. Well, I think it's as long as I, I feel that I can make a positive contribution uh, to the American youth. And, uh, you know, my, a few years ago, I was a lot of pain with my knee, but then I got that straightened out. So. Uh, I still have a passion for the game. I like to coach, and uh, you know, as long as I feel good and in good health, I'm going to continue to do it. You know, talking with Coach Richardson yesterday, he said, man, it doesn't seem like 15 years. He said, you've got a great administration, great staff, the players buy into the system, and I don't like golf. I'm a football <laughs> coach. He's a film guy. That's what he does. Off season, day off, that's what he does. He watches film. Asked him when he was retired, he said, I don't think my wife would want me to be around the house that much. He's got to get back out there and coach. 121 wins in his 15 years at Southern. Second and 10 for the Jaguars, threatening up by a 14-7 score. Matthews will run it, finds a block, gets it, lost the football, and Bradley State says they have it. The last hit, I think, by Christian Anthony knocked it loose, and the Jaguars have it. And the uh, Grambling State Tigers have it. How about that for a turn of events? And, and Matthews has to know, and Southern needs to know that when you have a young quarterback coming in the football game, you're doing the right things with him, but you have to tell him to secure that football. And he's got to tuck it in right now. Don't go for the extra yards. He actually does a decent job, looks at of covering it up. He gets a, a nice hit on the ball. I think that was Christian Anthony, who's been all over the place, number 90, comes in and makes the hit. And then William Nance, who has blocked for a touchdown, gotten a sack, now he's recovered a fumble as Grambling State dodges a bullet. Second. 
Pete Richardson, Southern Jaguars with the lead, but they have a big loss on their side. Darren Horton has more. That's right, Bob. Uh, the X-rays came back positive on Bryant Lee. He has a fractured thumb. He will not play again in this game, so it's now on Matthews to uh, carry the Jaguars to victory. Let's go back to you. Uh, Bryant Lee went for X-rays, and he's got the fracture of the thumb. Warren Matthews just turned the football over deep in Grambling State territory. So the Tigers have the football down by seven. Landers back in at quarterback. Warren the tailback. Landers on a first down throw. Can't hook up with his tight end. Abney. And does Landers look a bit tentative all of a sudden? I think Grambling just looks out of sync all over the place. Landers has not been sharp all day long throwing the football. And now even in the short passing game that, that you really want to be an extension of your run game, he has missed uh, at least three or four receivers in the last few attempts. Has not been very accurate. He's still 12 and 22. That's usually what happens when you're not playing well. You guys come back and take a little cheap shot. At Bell, who got nicked up. Land is 0 for his last four. He started the game 5 of 6. Second and 10. Go, go. Get down the and then ball slipped out of his hands. It's ruled incomplete. Looked like someone stepped in his passing lane. He tried to pull it back down. Oh, well, the tuck rule. Yeah, not, not only do he seem out of sync, he's just, like, like you said, Bob, I, I think no, no confidence in what he's doing right now. And this time, tries to pull back on this football and just slips out of his hand. And I thought he had a guy open his tight end. His tight end happy, but just pulled the trigger on it. Grambling State scored on their first offensive possession. As Cornelius Walker ran it in from one yard out, they converted two fourth downs. But that has been it. Southern scored on their first two possessions, two 80-yard drives, both with both touchdowns, but both teams have struggled offensively. Third and ten. Warren the tailback. Landers has his money man, Edwards, and he's got the first down across the 25 to the 26. Malvo on the tackle. And that's the kind of game that Brandon Landers likes to play into. His big-time receiver, his favorite target. Nice little slant route. Possession football. Get the ball. Your, your numbers show you. Have the receiver show you his numbers. Fire that football in there. And they've got to get Brandon Landers back into some sort of rhythm and back playing exciting football. And, you know, this, this offense has been successful for them all year long. But this is the kind of guy, Brandon Landers, who needs to be pushed a little bit. And you got to get him to open up this offense. Inside handoff to Warren. He picks up about two. Wesley King on the tackle. Yeah, it's, it's been the Southern defense in front that has been most impressive. We heard from Pete Richardson at halftime. He thought that the, the, the Grambling front was, was going to be the dominant force in this, in this football game. And it really has been the Southern front that's controlled the line of scrimmage, at least in the pass game, and put, excuse me, in the run game, and put good pressure on Landers in the pass game, especially with the blitz. Especially after that opening drive in which Grambling State scored a touchdown. Second down, Landers finds Abney, sheds one tackle, and then Malvo knocks him down along with Williams. As Jamal George got the first hit on Tim Abney, a senior from Monroe, Louisiana, marketing major. Came into the game with 20 catches on the season. Two touchdowns. And I think Southern has to keep throwing the football, even if it's just a short passing game, has to keep throwing the football to allow Landers not just to get a rhythm, but to get his confidence back in this football game. Big third and one here coming for the Tigers of Grambling State, trailing by seven from their own 35. Warren in a one-back set. Landers to throw, pass deflected, incomplete, intended for Nick Lewis, but it was tipped at the line. Surprised they went away from their run. Yeah, and that time lands. The defensive end dropped back into coverage. It gave him a little disguise. Look, left side of the screen, there's Lands. He's gonna move back, drop into coverage and get a tip on the ball. And, and again, that's when Brandon Landers has to look at the whole field, recognize coverage. And that time, Southern tricked him and put Lands into coverage. Little zone blitz look. And that's a good dial-up by the defensive staff of Southern. Nelson back deep. Emmanuel the punt. His last one was not good, only 31 yards. This one has better height. Nelson from his own 23. Nelson finds turf from the 30 yard line. To a 5.57 to go here in the third. Southern hanging on to a 14 7 lead in the 34th State Farm Bayou.
NBC Sports proudly presents the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic from New Orleans. Rambling State and Southern. Southern with a 14-7 lead here in the third quarter of play. Throughout the day, we continued our celebration. Coach Eddie Robinson. Passed away earlier this year. Southern with the football. Matthews, who fumbled on his last carry, can't get to the outside, and it's Derek Johnson who made the tackle for Grambling State. As I mentioned, we continue the celebration of Coach Robinson. Lewis is with Mrs. Robinson. Well, Bob, what a treat it is to catch up uh, with his wife of 66 years and just telling me that uh, it's been a long time since you've been to a game. What does it mean for you to sit here and watch a Grambling game, uh, having your husband honored today? Oh, it means a whole lot to me. I have grandkids here who are witnessing everything that's happening mm -hmm. and being brought up to date because they don't all live with me. Some live in Atlanta, some from Chicago and different places, and they are here today. And they can see what I went through all of these years. It was a joy for me. I remember when we played the last game here mm -hmm. at one of the colleges and we didn't have the dorm. Right. And I remember when it was too crowded at Southern and too crowded at Graham. Right. And when we came into the dorm, it was just a thrill for all of us. You know, you had to say goodbye to your husband back in April. I have no idea how difficult that was. Can you tell us how you've gotten through so far after all the years of marriage and being together? Well, um, you know, he was this kind of guy that had to carry, you had to carry on, you right. know. You just don't throw up your hands. And I was so, I was overwhelmed by uh, all of the attention he got in death. Uh, I don't know, he almost heard from everybody in the world right. when he died, yes. you know. Yes. And that made me feel good. And finally, I'd like to know from you, what do you think Coach Rob's legacy is? Everyone has an opinion, but I think yours would count the most. I think his legacy is, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. And everybody is certainly somebody. That is a beautiful legacy. Thank you so much, Doris. And Rob, back to you. And I remember Coach Rob saying one thing, one job and one wife. And that was uh, so important to him. Thank you so much, Bob. What a treat to have Doris Robinson here as you take a look at the early years. As Lewis mentioned, 66 years together in marriage, truly partners. And she was honored along with the Robinson family in a pregame ceremony here at the Superdome. As everybody in the world of football paid their respects, but truly a, an American icon. Really is Eddie Robinson. And, and, and Eddie Robinson meant more than, than just a, a coach at Grambling. Or he meant so, so much to so many people around the world. And she looks great. She sounds great. And, and it's great to hear her talk about how far this program has come. And, and she's been right there. First down. You know, during the interview, you saw the freshman punt the football for Southern Josh Durant, a career long 65 yard. You talk about special teams. And now a false start by Grambling State. They're pinned inside their own one. They need to go 99 yards to tie it. Landers. And the hole is filled quickly as Walker took the handoff. Boy, that defensive front of Southern has really ramped it up after that first possession of the game for Grambling State. Yeah, I think that was Brian Lewis, 56, in the middle of the field. He's going to come up and make this big hit on Walker. How about the game for the redshirt freshman? The business major, Brian Lewis, has tipped passes. He's gotten to the quarterback. He's made tackles in the open field. Not only is today looking bright for Southern, but the future with the young linebacker core. Second and ten. Walker in and on. Walker finds room to rob the left, and it's once again Lewis who makes the tackle at about the seven-yard line. Lewis and Chapman, you're exactly right. These linebackers are playing very well for Southern. Another big stop. Lewis and Chapman have come from across the formation, and there's Lewis to fill in the hole. This defense for, for Southern has been very impressive against the run, shutting down the, these freshman running backs for Grandma. 
So a big third and five as far as field position. Grambling State trying to get out of a hole. Edwards in motion. Landers. Walker again. Stood up and stopped. That time it was Chapman who came in and nailed him. The freshman and the sophomore linebackers have been incredible. Chapman and the junior Malvo. And there's Manning, the safety coming up, the corner coming up and making the big hit. And you see that swarm tackling by this Southern defense. Southern's still in the field. They know they have to step up because of the injuries on the offensive side of the ball. And the defense has stepped up. And special teams, Bob, as you mentioned, is all doing their part. Now, Manuel needs a big punt to counterbalance the special teams play of Southern and then the great defense. Manuel has it blocked. They gave up pressure, and it's knocked around in the back of the end zone. And it's a safety. They did not get possession for the touchdown. It got knocked out of the back of the end zone for a safety. Great pressure by Southern as Brandon Green takes swarming in. Good teams step up on defense and on special teams when you lose your offense. It's going to come from the left side of your screen is the block. And well, that, it's Manning again. How about Manning? Joe Manning. From Tallahassee, Florida. The transfer from Florida State got the block. Green could not recover it, so it goes for a safety. You see, he did not have possession. He slid out of bounds, but special teams, the punt, the defensive stand, and then Joe Manning, the junior from Tallahassee, gets the block punt as Sutton widens their lead. On a website dedicated to kicks. Well, the all-new Ford Focus with the starting price of under $15,000. We had a lucky contestant with the correct key. And he is the winner of the all-new Ford Focus. That starting price of under $15,000. Not a bad way to spend the buy. He's picking up a car. The team doesn't win. It's still a winner of the day. Well, I'll tell you what. Joe Manning has had a winning day. He's played brilliantly on defense. He's gotten hits on the quarterback. And he blocked Tim Manuel's punt in the end zone. That went out of the back of the end zone for a Southern safety. First points since the first quarter. He's a junior. Transferred from Florida State. Manuel's the one who had the punt blocked. He'll kick the ball off. Didn't really have much of a chance. Nelson and Turner back deep. Offense, defense, special teams. Special teams has been a key for Southern. Turner, with a hesitation move, takes it out to the 37-yard line. Desmond Leonard on the tackle. Well, we start things off with the freshman Josh Duran with a career-long 65-yard punt, which set the wheels in motion for Southern getting the safety. Yeah, especially when your offense goes down, you want to see your entire team pick up and do it on all sides, all phases of the game. And here's the block punt. Could have been a touchdown to get the safety. Before that, we had the long punt by Southern and then the short punt by Grambling. And Pete Richardson's team is playing all three phases of the game, and that's why they're up 16-7. State Farm Bayou Classic. State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. First and 10 for Southern. To another quarterback run for Warren Matthews. He's in for the injured Bryant Lee, the outstanding sophomore for Southern, who suffered a broken bone in his thumb back in the first half. And, and they, they've been going with some design runs here for Matthews. They're going to have to open the, the game, ball game up, and, and this is not good. That's that's Lewis, the left guard, 77, who's down. This is a, a Southern team that started the season with eight offensive linemen. They don't have a lot of depth at this position. They've already lost to Marcus Stewart, their starting center, and now the left guard, Lewis, and, and now becomes the little shell game of, of where do you find another offensive lineman? Pete Richardson is going to have his work cut out for him, and there's only so much longer you can hide your quarterback, Matthews, and your left guard is Matthews, and it looks like he's just going to get the quarterback runs into the back of him and he gets bent over backwards. Yeah, as uh, one of the defenders came in and then another offensive lineman kind of hit Lewis in the back. You see him getting twisted back just to the right of your screen as Matthews dove forward. And as you mentioned, with Marcus Stewart out, Daniel Stevens 
has been playing at center. And Lewis is going to hobble off. So now they have to make another switch on the offensive line. And look who's in. Number 75, Demarcus Stewart, has been moved in at left guard. So he comes off the bench and he goes in at left guard. He was injured earlier. And they keep Stevens at center. Second and seven for Matthews and the Jaguars. Jamarius Stewart, the catch and run, spins up to the 46-yard line. Jack on the tackle. And he's two yards short of the first down. And they'll set up a third and short for Southern. That time, they just had a little deception. They pulled Jamarcus Stewart, who everyone's going to keep an eye on him. They pulled him. He still was hobbling a lot, a lot there with a little misdirection, showing the pull by the guard and throwing the ball opposite. So a third and two. Coates trying to make a man miss. Coates dives ahead and he's got the first down. Great running by Coates as he avoided to Michael Dizer, the safety who came up and pressed the play. Yeah, that's good vision by Coates. Just going to see that the, the line collapse inside, bounce outside the linebackers and dive for the first down. It's a great effort by Coates. And, you know, I've been very impressed with the way Southern has adjusted to all the problems they've had with injuries and everything else. They really have done a great job of adjusting to it. And that was a great play by Coates to get the first down. Coates holds up four fingers in his final collegiate game, four quarters. And right now through three, Southern has the edge. Coates has both touchdowns. They've played offense, defense, and special teams. After three, Southern 16, Grambling 7. We'll return to the State Farm Bayou Classic after these messages from your local NBC station. Former Grambling State head coach and quarterback Doug Williams now with the Tampa Bay Bucks here. Through three, Southern with a 16-7 lead over Grambling State. A lot of celebrities at the Bayou. Darren Horton's with one more. That's right, Ian Smith, Dr. Ian Smith here. And, and not only as a spectator, you're here to help a lot of the African Americans in this country. Absolutely. We started something called the 50 million pound challenge, which is to get America to lose a collective 50 million pounds. It's completely free. It's we have a website, 50millionpounds.com. State Farm is our generous sponsor. And to help people reverse the trend of obesity and early deaths, we're giving away these free kits. Any State Farm agent's office in the country, walk in, tell them you want a kit, no obligations. How do people get involved? Oh, go to the website, 50millionpounds.com. We have 250,000 people. We've already lost a million pounds since April, and we're going strong. We need 49 million more pounds. All right. That's Dr. Ian Smith, Bob, back upstairs. All right. That's a great cause, a great campaign, spearheaded by Dr. Ian Smith. We start the fourth, Southern with the football. Matthews, high throw. The man White, he didn't make the catch after the run, after that high throw. Michael Dyson with the safety, read it perfectly. Michael Dyson came from the safety position in a long way to get to make that play, but that's because it was a long throw to the field. Gave him time to come up from his safety position. And Southern's going to have to do it. You know, they really can't get too conservative here because Grambling State eventually is going to get the idea that they're not going to open things up with Matthews. They need to throw the ball vertical down the field to let Grambling know that they're going to open up this offense and keep running. They've got a full quarter to play. But with the way they're playing defense, they are up two scores. Matthews can't shed the defender, and he gets to the 49-yard line. Otis Young, junior from Philadelphia, transfer from New Hampshire, pre-nursing major, gets his sixth tackle of the season. Yeah, when you have a young quarterback in here, all of a sudden the defense starts to, you know, they, they, they smell blood in the water, and, they, and they're going to go after you. They're going to play a little bit more aggressively, and you see a good play there by the front for Grambling State and good coverage down the field that enabled that sack. But Southern was doing exactly what I was talking about, Bob, and that, that is they're going to have to open the, the, the game up with their offense. They can't go on the show with Matthews at quarterback. Third down for Southern. Matthews with a deep drop. Has some time. Completes it to Landry. Makes a man miss, and Landry gets an extra yard down to the 41. Fumbled the football, but he was out of bounds when he came out. Grambling State. Trying to force the fumble. Southern keeps the possession. 19-yard pickup for Landry. You see a pass like that, and you wonder why they have Matthews running the football the way he has been. This is a nice, strong throw by Matthews to Landry. He gets the ball out there on time and allows his playmaker, Landry, to, make, to, do, to do something. And, and you know, the fumble, the ball comes out, and that's definitely a fumble inbounds. 
Should be Grambling football, but we have no no instant replay here. No official review, although it did look like Landry's feet were on the boundary when the ball came out. That would make him out of bounds. Southern with the football, first and ten at the 31. Matthews nowhere to go. And Wilburn came up and stuffed the position. Let's take another look at the play to Landry. Yeah, I, th I think he was definitely in bounds on this. He's starting to play with the football there. His feet are still in. Hard to see. That ball's out before he goes out. All that matters is how the officials ruled it. Take a look right. He's in. Ball's out. Yeah. That should have been a turnover. Things just seem to be going right for Southern in the second half. Special teams, they get the good break there on the, on the on the fumble. Now Pete Richardson calls a timeout with the play clock at one. So his squad will regroup. Rod Broadway thought his team had forced a big turnover. Southern maintains possession with a nine-point lead here in the fourth. The State Farm Bayou Classic is brought to you by the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. By the new 2008 Ford Focus with Zinc, powered by Microsoft. And by State Farm. State Farm is proud to be the title sponsor of one of the most legendary games in the country. Downtown New Orleans on a beautiful Saturday. Southern Band, according to your votes, a six percentage point win in the Battle of the Bands at the half. Southern with the football and the lead. Matthews on a second down. Can't find Coates in the flat. Antoine Rogers on the coverage. Coates had four carries for 45 yards on the opening drive. He capped it off with a touchdown run. He finished off the second drive of the game, an 80-yard drive with a touchdown catch. The only point since then, a safety. At the end of the third quarter, the two teams combined for three touchdowns on the first three offensive possessions. No points in the last 15. Third and long for Matthews. Under some pressure. Zips it, and he's got Stewart down at the first down marker. He'll rule him down, and it's a first down for Southern. Another offensive lineman for Southern down, and a flag as well. It'll be a hold. Holy. On the offense, number 74, 10 yards from the previous spot, replay third down. We'll call it on Ruben Oliver. He's a redshirt junior from Monroe. And there is Daniel Stevens, who was in for Demarcus Stewart, who got hurt earlier. When Rafael Lewis went out, Stewart came back in at left guard. So this banged up Southern offensive line continues to take more hits. Talked with Pete Richardson yesterday, he said, you know, we've had to deal with injuries all year, but this is getting ridiculous. Yeah, it just continues to get ridiculous. And, and you know, this is the, the point that I was making about putting your quarterback and your entire team in an obvious pass situation, you know, at a bit of a disadvantage. And in this case, it takes a toll on the offensive line. And another guy who gets cut underneath and bent over backwards, Daniel Stevens. And this, this offensive line, you know, they're gonna start going to, to wide receivers and running backs that have to come in and protect. Stevens played his high school ball at Glen Oaks High School in Baton Rouge. Pete Richardson's squad has hung in there. The, obviously, the penalty negates the first down. It's now third and 21 for Warren Matthews. Under some pressure, goes to the field side and throws it out of bounds as Aaron Brown was thinking pick the corner. For Grambling State, and again, Christian Anthony, the sophomore, has been impressive up front for Grambling State today. He got some pressure on the quarterback. He's been all over the field. Bobby you made a great point. As long as the Southern can keep playing this game of field position, the entire second half almost has been played on the Grambling State side of the football field. Grambling State has not been able to figure out Southern's defense and just hasn't been able to move the football at all since the opening drive. Freshman Josh Durant's 65-yard punt set the wheels in motion for the safety. Edwards will return to the inside his own attempt. Edwards can't find the outside. 
and gets it up to the 16-yard line before Coates, the running back for Southern, made the tackle. Let's take a look at our stats through three quarters. Brought to you by State Farm. And you take a look at the Southern running game. It's been effective. They've been able to control the football with 301 yards. Yeah, and, and that, that's the, really the stat that jumps out of you. There. Although Southern has dominated, uh, you know, in, in, in all categories, but that those rush yards has, has allowed Southern, especially in the second half, to maintain possession of the football, getting first downs uh, with this, with, without their starting quarterback, Brian Lee. State Farm, for your insurance and financial needs, call a neighborhood State Farm agent today. First and 10 for Brandon Landers, of Grambling State down nine. Screen set up to Warren, and then Malvo plants him at the 24-yard line. And holds it to a gain of about seven. How about the linebacking core of Southern today? Yeah, and this is going to be a big play for Malvo because he comes from the, the other side of the football field to make this play. They have been very impressive playing sideline to sideline, stuffing the run in the, on the inside, and also doing a decent job in the secondary in the pass game. Second and three for Grambling State. Warren on the run. Warren nowhere to go. As again, everything just collapses in front of him. Dexter James got his hat in there to make a play. And you know when the linebackers are flowing to the ball, Don, you know that your defensive linemen are winning the battle up front because the linebackers are going untouched. And that's exactly what we've seen from, from Lance and the, the rest of that front for the Southern. And this is a big third down play. Warren the tailback, Warren on the handoff, and it is stuffed. Malvo was there to fill the hole again. And it was those linebackers, Chapman, Lewis, Malvo, all making the play in the backfield. For Southern, just not allowing them to get going. You see offensive linemen running past and linebackers running underneath to stop on the big third down play. And how about Vincent Lance? He came crashing in from his end spot and got low and opened it up for Malvo. Team defense again. Emmanuel in the punt. He had his last one blocked for the safety. Takes a low snap. Ball is there. Teams. Manning is going to be the guy who just comes off the edge all day long. He's been coming off in, 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 uh, in the past game, and here he comes off again in special teams. He gets a little bit of a block, but it was a bad snap by Grambling and opened the door for Manning to put him on the, on the punter. Charlie Brewer with the low snap. Manuel tried to scoop it up, and now Southern trying to put an exclamation point on this one. Coach. Inside the five, knocked down at the four by Derek Johnson and John Carter. But if you're if you're Pete Richardson right now, the one thing you cannot have is a penalty flag. They've got to call for a couple of key holes. And the one thing that you hope that your, your young quarterback understands is let that play clock run down to zero. Right now, it looks like he's going to snap it just a little bit too soon. Coates on the handoff, dragged down from behind by Derek Johnson. The sophomore middle linebacker. Johnson has come off the bench and played a whale of the second half. From Monroe, Louisiana, he's a sophomore, an electronics engineering major, and he engineered a fine defensive play there. Yeah, and he snapped this ball way too early. You have to let it get down. Nice play by the linebacker there, shooting, shooting the gap. But Matthews has to manage this clock right now. When you have this kind of lead, and, which, and you know they're not going let to let, let him open up the offense, He's got to manage the clock. Last time he snapped the ball with 15 seconds. Now he's getting a new 10. He's got to take it down, down to 1 2 and snap it. Coach was over 100 until that last carry. He sends a pass to the left and it's short of the end zone. As he got it to Benjamin out of the backfield, Jeffrey Jack saved the touchdown and there was a flag on the play back in the offensive backfield. Uh, That's exactly what you said they can't do, Nick. Southern can't afford it. a penalty, and here they get the hold. Now it would be fourth and goal at the one. Hold it. Number 74, on the offense, 10-yard penalty, three to spot, you play third down. 
That's Ruben Oliver. So they'll accept the penalty. That'll make it third and goal. And they declined the penalty. It would have been fourth and goal at about the one. But you push him back and see if you can get a stop here. Ruben Oliver spent the summer on an internship at NASA. He's a computer science major. So now fourth and goal. Matthews checks down to the five. And a good tackle made on Landry by Jeffrey Jack, the safety. Again, you see Matthews throw the football. You wonder why they don't let him do that more often. So the field goal unit will come out for Southern. Good open field tackle by Jack to make sure Landry gets no yards after the catch. Josh Durant, two for five on field goals this year. We'll try a 23-yard field goal from the left hash to widen the Southern lead. He's long this year, 31. Snap is good, kick on its way, and the freshman, Josh Duran, who's had a big role in this 34th State Farm Bayou Classic, nails a 23-yard field goal, and the Jaguars push their lead to 19-7. Well, Coach Richardson's special teams have paid dividends the Jaguars looking for the upset. A crowd of 76,188, which still stands as the Bayou's best, saw the lowest scoring game in the 59-year history of this series. In the third official Bayou Classic, Doug Williams was under center for Grambling. But it was the defense that held Southern without an offensive score as they held off the Jaguars 10-2, the final score. Here at the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic, Doug Williams, we saw him earlier. We'll hear from him in just a bit. Josh Duran, who has a career-long 65-yard punt, has just nailed a 23-yard field goal. As Hills and Edwards are back deep for Grambling State. Rars Hills from his own nine for Grambling State, trying to provide a spark. Picked up as he gets across the 30 to the 32-yard line as we send it down to Lewis Johnson with Doug Williams. Yeah, Bob, Doug was just uh, talking about that every, as everybody watched the highlights. Something happened, Doug, back in 76 right in this corner. What do you remember? Well, it was a defensive struggle, number one, and the only touchdown that was scored, I hit uh, Carlos Finnewell in the corner of the end zone on a 28 pass drive. Now, I know you're a coach, and you look at this score, 19-7, they were hot the first drive the Tigers were. What's happening now, and how do you think they get back in this game? Well, you know, we all know when you come to play this football game, no matter what the records are, like Southern, you know, this is this is their season. Grambling going to the championship game, and Southern has nothing to lose, so they pull out all stops, and, you know, they're playing a great football game, but you're playing against a guy who's been here before, Coach Pete Richardson. You know, he, he's probably one of the most craftiest coach there is, so he understands what it takes to win the football game. Uh, I, I'm a little disappointed. I thought Grambling would have moved the ball a little more. They hadn't moved it. Uh, Landers hadn't, you know, played as well as I would hope for. But you know what? That's the way it falls. And I have to ask you about Eddie Robinson. Great tributes here today to his memory. We were there together in April when he was laid to rest. What are your thoughts here, this first Bayou Classic without the legend around? Well, you know, it's hard to even think about the Bayou Classic without Eddie Robinson because it wouldn't have been a Bayou Classic without Eddie Robinson. You know, I was fortunate enough to play in the, the first Bayou Classic in Tulane Stadium because of Eddie Robinson in college day Nichols. So, you know, you're talking about a man that, when you talk about football, was not his college or pro, no be forgotten. All right, good to see you, Doug. Thank you. Bob? All right. And, uh, with that said, Grambling State with some of the more effective plays. Jackson with the last catch. Clyde Edwards on the previous play with the seventh catch of the ball game for 58 yards. Down by 12, Landers zips it left and completes it to Nick Lewis, the junior from Marshall, Texas. Michael Williams on the tackle. And this is Brandon Landon's game. This is the game that, that, that Grandma State is used to playing, especially in the Bayou Classic. Open it wide up, get him in that no huddle, let him make plays at the line of scrimmage, let him be the athlete, the savvy leader that he is. They can get a quick one on the board. I mean, they're down 12. And they have all three timeouts remaining. Play clock down to 10 as Landers gets his team organized. Warren in the backfield with Landers. On first and ten, Landers tipped and nearly intercepted as Malvo, the middle linebacker, deflected the pass. 
Yeah, not a well-advised pass for Landers. Again, throwing into the middle of the field. Malvo dropped, dropped into coverage. Landers threw right to him. I think you know. I think that short passing game for them has been worked. It's been what they've been most consistent at. When they try to go to the next level, they haven't been as accurate. And they break Clyde Edwards free. Edwards lined up at the top of the screen. Split right for Landers on the second and ten. They had one chance with him back in the first half of the close. Little screen to Warren. Stiff arms the linebacker and Warren. Hurdles the man and gets out of bounds at the 34 yard line. That time he stiff on Brian Lewis and made some yards after the contact. Yeah, that was a good little stiff arm by, by the freshman on Lewis. It was a very strong linebacker. He's had a great game so far. A nice little screen, middle screen by, by Grandma State. It's what they have to do to keep, to compensate for this rush that Southern has been able to put on. And now Southern was late getting Lewis off the field and they have to burn a timeout. So that is the second timeout used by Southern. They have one remaining, but right now they have a 12 point lead with 6.37 to go here at the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic. Okay, everybody, I'm sending you all across the country to visit our top clients. Back in New Orleans, look at Bourbon Street on this Saturday afternoon, the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic from the Superdome in New Orleans. Southern with a 19-7 lead here in the fourth quarter. Rod Broadway coaching his first Bayou Classic, and Don, his team has had quite a few miscues. Yeah, it has been a sloppy game. You see the high snap by Cockrell, and then the big loss on the sack, and then, and then not recognizing defensive fronts and getting sacked. Big hit in the mouth, interception, steps out of bounds right here. He had a chance to take it the distance for the touchdown, and then we see the special teams problems, the block, the block punt for the safety, and then the bad snap for the big loss set up a field goal for Southern. And the special teams of Southern has been outstanding. Coach Broadway, 33 and 11 in his four years at North Carolina Central, his first year as head coach at Grambling State. His team 8-0 in the conference coming into this game, 8-2 overall. Landers able to complete it to Kavaris Hill. Got a first down. We'll talk about Coach Broadway. He played college football at North Carolina. He's a defensive lineman. He's worked with some top people. Yeah, he has. You look at that list. Spurrier, Stoops, Bob Standard, now the offensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers. Bob Pruitt, those many great years at, at Marshall. And, of course, Tommy Bowden. He's had a, a lot of experience with, with a lot of very good coaches with a whole variety of different approaches to the game of football. You, you see him bringing it here. He came in talking about discipline. An execution. And as Landers takes the snap, we get a whistle, and Southern calls their last timeout. Interesting because there was only one second left on the play clock, but Pete Richardson did not like the defense that he was in. So he calls another defensive timeout. That's twice in this series he used a timeout. And I think you, you think that this is his shot that he's going to make that decision at this point in the ball game knowing he's got a young quarterback in there. You know, he asked Coach Broadway about working with Steve Spurrier. He was with him for 12 years. And uh, he says he owes a lot to what he learned from Coach Spurrier in his time in Florida Duke. America don't know the Coach Spurrier that um, that I worked with for 12 years. You know, he's a He's a he's a good guy, you know, good family guy, and uh, is a pretty loyal guy, you know. So and 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 a smart football coach. So, and I told him, you know, I find myself now saying some of the things he used to say to us as a staff. I say it to my staff quite a bit. Yeah, one of those things is the game can be fun. This is what he learned from Coach Spurrier. Enjoy your downtime, but do your job well. Good is not good enough. That's one of the messages that he took in his time with Steve Spurrier, Duke and Florida. So after the Southern timeout, 6.04 to go. First and 10 for Grambling State. They're down by 12. Landers checks down and flat a big hit on Jackson. What a pop that time delivered by Toykin Akinwala. 
and Akawaj to, to sniff this play out because this is where, where Grambling has gone when they needed this kind of play. They've gone to a short passing game into the flat. They, again, they have not stretched the field vertically, and so Southern really is sniffing out those short passes. Lost the yard. Landers going deep, looking for Edwards. Did he get his feet in? Touchdown! Tough catch on the sideline by Clyde Edwards, Grambling State's all-time leading touchdown reception. He's got number 37 on his career. It goes for 27 yards. And this is what the Bayou crowd is used to seeing, putting that football up in the air, going vertical with it, and there's the catch. There's one, and the drag. All he needs is one touchdown. Great job by Edwards to get Grambling State right back in it. Tim Manuel on to the extra point. 529 to go. And Manuel's kick is low and he skimmed it right into the line and it's no good. So again, special teams bites Grambling State in the foot, but this time Edwards beats Manning on the 27-yard touchdown on a perfect throw from Landers. And he put nice air on the football again. This is something they haven't done long this past attempt of the game other than the interceptions that he's thrown. Drops it right in the bucket. Brandon Landers told us that coach told us it's a 60 minute game, keep playing, but then the extra point. And Manuel just looked like he hit the top part of the ball right into the line, it was deflected. I think Jamal George got a hand on it. So the margin now is six for Southern here in the fourth. Now they need their offense to run out the clock. Clyde Edwards touchdown catch gets Grambling State right back in the ball game. 37, which is a Grambling State school record, 37 touchdown catches. We asked him yesterday about his legacy at the story Grambling State school. It's an honor, man. Um, like I said, there's been some great, great receivers here at Grambling. And just to be mentioned in the same category with some of them guys is, is just an honor. Well, he needs four more catches to have the most receptions in school history, and he needs 38 yards to have the most receiving yards in school history, and Grambling State has produced some fine wide receivers over the years who have gone on to have tremendous success in the National Football League. Manual with the kickoff. Fielded by Albert Turner. Turner trying to get to the outside, turns the corner to the 25 and goes out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Take a look at his stats. 50 catches hey, on the season for 733 yards. He's got over 50 catches in each of the last three years. And take a look at the touchdown totals, 12 this year. And this is a guy you'll definitely see on Sunday afternoon. He'll definitely get an opportunity to play in the NFL. I think he's good enough to play. I think he's good enough to be impressive. And one of the great receivers in Grambling State history, Sammy White, is his position coach. He said, he's taught me everything. And he's been a father figure to me since I've been here at Grambling State. On first and ten for Southern, they're going to run it. Try to move the chains. Coates gets a yard, and that's it. Melvin Matthews. And Southern has to be very I'm careful down. here. Excuse me. Southern has to be very careful here not to fold the tent and go into a shell. They need to keep playing their, their offense, keep opening it up, because they, they, they have no timeouts, and they're playing. Excuse me. They have all three of the timeouts. It's, Zero timeouts for Southern, and and, and uh, they, they're uh, they're playing with this young quarterback who really hasn't managed the clock very well. Matthews on a second down. Matthews big pass to Landry, and he gets tied up right in his tracks near the marker. As Keith Anio Jr. made the tackle. And Anio's given Landry all kinds of room there. He's got to come up and press. Remember, Landry's playing with a little bit of a gimpy ankle, and so Anio can't give him that much room in the secondary. He's got to press him and make him work for it. It's that time in the ball game when you can't give them anything up front. Make him work for it. And it looked like Landry had enough to gain the marker. They moved the chains. A big first down for Southern. The 34th Annual State Farm Bayou Classic visit the neighborhood State Farm agent today. First and ten for Southern. They lead by six. Matthews in for the injured Bryant Lee. Gives for Coates. Coates across the 40 to the 43-yard line. 
where he's tackled by Melvin Matthews. Coates has had a fine ball game. He's over 100 yards in the contest. He has a touchdown running and a touchdown receiving. Capped off the first two possessions of the ball game for Southern. Two 80-yard drives ended in Coates touchdowns. Yeah, you'd think they put the, the, the ball, the, the shoulder, the, the, the game on his shoulders right now after the impressive first half he has. But I like what they're doing right now, keeping the game spread out with this young quarterback. Matthews on a second down, a run. Dives up the middle to the 46 yard line. Banks got an ankle on him. Carter cleaned it up. Yeah, and, and Grambling State's now going to have to start burning timeouts at, at three and a half minutes left, 328. Well, they need a stop right here with 3.28 to go. And Southern facing a third and two. The coach Broadway calls for timeout to get his defense aligned. He's really changed over the staff. He brought in Clifford Yoshida from North Carolina Central to be his defensive coordinator. James Spady from North Carolina Central to be his offensive coordinator. Trey Oliver is outside linebacker coach. Jay Davis is quarterback coach. Sean Gibbs is running backs coach. And you, you mentioned Sammy White. He's really the only guy that they kept over from this from this coaching staff. And, and Sammy has been such a, an important part of the Grambling family and the Grambling program for so many years. But all those other guys, you mentioned Graves and Yoshida, those guys come in with impressive resumes on this coaching staff and, and really the guys that they need to turn this thing around. And Coach Yoshida actually was with Southern in Coach Pete Richardson's first year. So a big third and two. Coach in the backfield. The quarterback Matthews. He will throw. Matthews downfield and what a catch made by Coach the running back. At the 20 yard line. He told us his last college game was going to be fun and Darren Coach is having a blast. And that's going to be Coach coming out of the backfield right there. And he's going to be one on one with Jack, the linebacker, for the free or strong safety. And this is just an outstanding catch by Coach over Jack that juggles onto the shoulder. Jack was the guy they thought they could have a matchup against Coach and they could beat him on one on one. He's the softest guy in, in terms of one-on-one -on -one coverage. And Coach, the leading receiver on the team, just makes an outstanding catch. He told us it would mean a lot to him to lead the club in receiving as well as rushing after all the work he did in the offseason to make himself a better football player. This time they hand off to Kendrick Smith, who picks up a couple. Melvin Matthews on the tackle. Well, Coach Richardson... Closing in on a victory. He's with Darren Horton. You're really close to getting the victory, then. What do you think about that catch? Well, I thought it was outstanding. He's been doing a good job for us all year, so he's making plays for us. What will this victory mean to you, Coach? It mean a great deal because they're going to the championship game. This is our last game, trying to build on next year. Thank you very much. Bob? A try Grambling State, even if they lose this game, will play for the conference championship. They already have the West Division of the SWAC wrapped up. Coach trying to bounce it outside. Coach powers his way to the 15-yard line before Dyser makes the stop. Well, you heard Pete Richardson's voice. It wasn't much left of it. He's been as animated and, and as excited in this ball game as, as we've ever seen him. And what a job by Darren Coates in this ball game as Coach Richardson has put a lot on Coates' plate. Coates told us that last year's Bayou when he had seven carries for 52 yards and a touchdown was sort of a springboard for him this year. Take a look at Pete Richardson. He just signed a new three-year extension, 121 wins, four black national championships, five conference titles, five-time coach of the year, and 11-3 and here in the buy-in. And Matthews did not get the playoff. The back judge threw the flag. That means delay of game. This is what I talked about a young Number 11. The young quarterback has not managed the clock very well, and just another example. You know, you look at Pete Richardson's his, his record, especially in the last several years. His his program has been functioning out of trailers there in Baton Rouge on, on campus at, at Southern, and really uh, they're about to break ground on a brand new facility that won't be finished for a new a next few years. But he has that new contract. He's going to have new facilities. It's just amazing things that he has done here at Southern with, without the great facilities that you see on some other campuses. That's a huge penalty for Southern. As Matthews takes a deep drop, he's going to lob it for Coach, deflected and incomplete. 
But that delay of game penalty is huge because that takes Southern out of field goal range. A Southern field goal because Grambling State had their extra point blocked would make it a nine point lead if they were able to convert the field goal and again make it a two possession game. That's why the blocked extra point was huge on Grambling State's touchdown. And now it's up to Josh Duran, who's hit from 23 yards out. He has a career long 65 yard punt. Will try a 37 yard field goal. His long on the season is 31. He's a true freshman to give Southern a nine point lead. They've been flawless on special teams. Durant's kick does it have the distance? It's good. How about the freshman Josh Durant, a career-long 37-yarder, and now the lead is nine because of the blocked extra point by Southern on Grambling State's touchdown. And, and coach has been outstanding. The offensive line, and Julian Tobbles has been good. The linebacker play for Southern has been outstanding. But you have to give a lot of credit to special teams for Southern. They have made the difference in this football game. Josh Duran, a freshman from Eunice, Louisiana. Here's Pete Richardson, reason to celebrate. What a game by Duran. His 65-yard punt earlier set the wheels in motion. A three and out, and then a block punt guarded a safety for Southern. I'd like to see that kicker, Durant, giving the chest bump. The guy's twice his size. And you talk about schemes and offense and defense and running games and too many times fans and spectators leave out the special teams, but what a role that that is having in this game. And that blocked extra point makes this a two possession game for Southern. And the catch by Coates is huge on the third and two. Hills from his own seven tripped on the turf and goes down at the 25 yard line. Well, it's time to take a look at today's Ford Defensive Player of the Game, and it goes to Joe Manning, the junior from Tallahassee, up and supporting the run. Gets a block punt that garnered a safety. And then on the bad snap, it was Manning, the tackle manual, that set up a Southern field goal. Joe Manning, the Ford Defensive Player of the Game. It's almost tough to single anybody out with Southern, but the way they have played their game, a little razzle-dazzle here. And Larry Curligan is looking to pass it deep, but Southern had it read perfectly. And it's that point in the Bayou Classic when the bands start playing louder, it's like the bands are playing you off the field. And, and Grambling State has, has really had such a big disadvantage, hasn't been able to do much at all offensively since the first quarter. They're going to try everything they can. Little route. They might, you might see the fumble rooster coming up. Yeah, the other thing about Manning, he had a couple of big hits on Landers early in the game on that corner blitz. Landers to throw. Intercepted. F.A. Awesome run wins a. Gets his sixth interception of the season, and that should deal it for Southern. Brandon Landers gets picked in. F.A. Asamoah Wednesday, Wednesday, the junior from Duncansville, Texas. Well, Landers is late on the throw, and Asamoah Wednesday just reads it, cuts up underneath the receiver, Jackson, and there's no one there to stop him. Just a little bit of push by Warren. 32-yard return. F.A. Asamoah Wednesday, a psychology major, gotten ahead of Landers and picked it off to seal it for Southern, his sixth interception of the season. And now Southern goes to the best formation any offense could know, the victory formation, as they'll take a knee. And, and, and Bob, this was a, a true, true team victory for Southern with the injuries on the offensive line, the injury to their starting quarterback, 
They just came back and they fought against this, this Grambling State defensive front that came in with, with all the hype, and, and they just done a great job, offense, defense, and special teams. And Pete Richardson has a lot to be proud of his young men who came out knowing that this was their last game. Grambling State's on their way to the SWAC championship, and these young men have played one for the coach. The day after signing a new contract, he's got a lot to be proud of. And boy, the way they turned up the defense after Grambling State's first possession ended in a touchdown. The defensive line, the linebackers, the secondary, spectacular. And the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic goes to the Southern University Jaguars. And Pete Richardson, who's an incredible 12 and 3 in this game in his 15 years as head coach at Southern. And, and the Bayou Classic is that's just a message that people love championships and love love the SWAT championship. The Bayou Classic is the big game for these for these two teams and bragging rights for the rest of the year. You see the coaches meet. And now Broadway has its first understanding of what the Bayou Classic is all about. He's going to have a chance to reflect on this game and get his team ready for the SWAT championship. Rod Broadway in his first year at head coach at Bramley State will have a championship game, but he loses in the Bayou. Pete Richardson gets another victory here in the Bayou. He's with Darren Horton. Well, Coach, you got it done. Congratulations. What does this victory mean? It means a great deal to the football team because we went through so much adversity, so many injuries, and I was just proud of the effort. They played hard for 60 minutes. Tell me about Coach and the game he played. Well, I think our Coach is doing an outstanding job all year. He's probably our MVP on offense and not only running ball but catching it also. Congratulations, Coach. Bob, back up to you. All right, Darren. Well, Coach Richardson's squad did a fantastic job. You see the sportsmanship as the two teams embrace here at the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic. But it was the defense that turned up the notch today for Southern, and then their special teams was outstanding. Brandon Landers under pressure all day long. Today's State Farm players of the game. As we take a look at the two winners from each school, Darren Coates, 20 carries, 107 yards and a touchdown, plus four catches for 46 yards and a score as well. And Clyde Edwards, well, spectacular game. Eight catches, 84 yards, including that excellent 27-yard touchdown catch. Send it back down to the field with Darren Horton. He's with Darren Coates. That's right, Bob. Could you have written a better script? No, I couldn't. We just gave, came out there. It was for the singing, it was a big game. We just came out there and put our heart on the line, just left, left everything on the field. And if we had the rest of the team to back us up, we just came out hard, played hard. We prepared for two weeks straight off a of bye week. We just came out and played hard and came out to win. What does it mean to close out your career with a game like this? It means a lot to me to go out with a win. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of my team for fighting with me to come out with a win. That's all we ask for, to come out in the Bayou Classic with a win. He's the hero, Bob, back upstairs. Well, he had a good bayou last year with 52 yards rushing. He had a great bayou here in 2007. His touchdown catch in the first quarter gave Southern a 14-0 lead. He goes over 100 yards rushing, although Coach didn't like that because he got a <laughs> penalty. But Darren Coach then made a big catch on a third and two here in the fourth quarter that set up a field goal to make the margin a nine-point margin in traffic. And how about Warren Matthews, number 11, coming off the bench for Bryant Lee, who got hurt? And it all kind of set things up for Coates and the rest of the Southern Jaguars in an impressive victory. Yeah, and, and you can't say enough about the Southern defense. I thought that stepped up, up big in stopping those two impressive freshmen running back for Grambling State. The linebacking core of Lewis, Malvo, uh, those guys played very well in Chapman. And, and up front, I thought they played very well a, as well as an entire defensive front. And, of course, Manning with the big plays on the corner blitz, on special teams, came up big. And how about number 56, redshirt freshman Brian Lewis and the game that he had along with Gary Chapman and Jonathan Malvo, the linebackers. They were spectacular. Well, time for the post-game celebration and honors as we send it down to Lewis Johnson. All right, Bob, thanks a lot. And to all of you here in the Louisiana Superdome, if we could get your attention down to the center of the field, it is time to hand out some special awards for this 34th annual State Farm Bayou Classic. And here representing State Farm, uh, the Vice President of Marketing from Corporate, Miss Pam Eel. And Miss Eel, why don't you go ahead and make the presentation to Coach. Coach Richardson, congratulations on an awesome game. On behalf of State Farm and all of our agents and associates, I'd like to present to you the State Farm Bayou Classic Winner's Trophy. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much. And, Coach, you, you have the trophy in your hand now. 
It's been an amazing run. Can you explain how you're able to come to New Orleans and win this Bayou Classic so many times? Well, I think uh, we have a lot of players down from this area. Their families are excited about seeing them have an opportunity to play. And our players just played an outstanding football game today against a fine team. Take us inside uh, your sideline for the, early in the, in the game when you lost your quarterback, Bryant Lee. What did you think about that situation and how it might affect the game? Well, we knew Brian is now did an outstanding job for us, but Warren is capable of playing. He just hadn't had an opportunity to do it, but uh, I think he did a fine job in there, but our team just played hard for 60 minutes. Speaking of uh, great play, Coates was unbelievable. Talk about his threat, not only from behind the quarterback, but also catching the ball. Well, he's probably our MVP of the year. He's been playing immensely in all these games, making outstanding plays for us, not only running the football, but catching it also. And special teams. I mean, it was a total effort day. Speak about how great the special teams played today. Well, I thought that uh, blocking those punts puts us in great field ball field position and uh, I think the special teams did a good great job. Coach I think everybody would like to know well, how much longer do you think you can do this? I mean, so much pressure but it seems to be your passion. Well you know I like it and as uh, long as I can go and feel good I'm going to continue to coach. We've talked so much today about Eddie Robinson and what he's meant to this game. What did he mean to you? Well he was a very dynamic individual not only to black football but in talent football also. He's a great man to me also an outstanding leader in the community. All right, Coach. Uh, here is your champion, the coach of Southern, Mr. Pete Richardson, holding the championship trophy. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Now let's bring up Darren Coates, the MVP for Southern. Come on up here, Darren. Big day for you. Darren Coates, everybody. Congratulations. Uh, and we will have the presentation by Mr. Josh Joe Formosa, Senior Vice President from the Florida Zone. Go ahead, Joe. Thank you. And congratulations, and it's an honor and privilege to recognize Darren Coates as the player of the game for the Southern University Jaguars. Congratulations, Darren. Thank you. Go ahead and take that, uh, Darren. And I don't know if you know it, but the game is over now. You can crack a smile. You can relax at the moment. You said you wanted to come in here and have fun. Is that what we saw today? Yeah, that's what we did. We just came out here and had fun on my part. I just came out there and did and played, left my heart on the field. It's my last game, so I just wanted to leave everything on the field and come out with a win. What does a performance like this mean to you, being that it's your last game? And I know you were thinking about some records that you'd like, like to leave here with. What does this performance mean to you? I'm just, I'm just proud of myself. I can go out and say I did everything I can do. So I'm just glad and proud of myself and just wishing for the, for the best for me. All right, Darren Coates, MVP for Southern. Congratulations. And now the Grambling Most Valuable play, Player Senior Wide Receiver Clyde Edwards and for the presentation, Mr. Brent Roten, Agency Vice President from the Central Zone. Go ahead, sir. Congratulations on a great game. You're the player of the game, and you've been a great asset today and to the Bayou Classic, and you'll go down in history. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. I know uh, bittersweet to have a trophy, but having lost the game, first of all, speak to the disappointment of not winning the Bayou Classic this year. Yeah, we really wanted with this one. Uh, coming in, we had a chance to go undefeated in the uh, conference. But Southern played a great game, and we came out on the wrong end. But we got to get ready for the championship game. How proud of you are you of the way this team has been turned around under your new head coach? It says a lot about the, uh, the players and the coaches to go from a 3-8 and eight season to go to what we're on the brink of now. And how long do you have to think about this one with a championship game just around the corner? Um, we played a championship game on the 15th of December. All right, not long. Clyde Edwards, congratulations on a great performance today. Tough loss, though. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. And we'll go back up to Bob Papa. Bob? Disappointment for Clyde Edwards as he reeled in his 37th career touchdown catch, and uh, he gave it an effort, but Warren Matthews comes off the bench, quarterback for Southern with the injury to Bryant Lee, and he was able to manage things, and he makes the big throw on a third and two as he's able to hook up with Darren Coates out of the backfield. And it's just impressive what Matthews was able to do. And Coach, you get a look at Vincent Lands, who will be back for another season, graduate studies, a biology major. You see him number 33 just to the right of your screen. You've got to look at Bryant Lee, who is out of his uniform. But for uh, the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic turned out to be an exciting ball game. 
Don, in the fact that these teams played great defense, but it was Southern who made all the little plays and made the big plays on special teams to break the game open. Yeah, Southern played well on, on all fast as, aspects of, of the game. The offense struggled a little bit after Bryant Lee right there went down uh, in the first half, but then Matthews came in and kind of maintained the offense, but really didn't do anything special. But the defense played exceptionally well, and they came up big in special teams. And it was a big game for Southern. The real challenge is for Gramlin to regroup from this football game and get ready for the SWAC championship. All right, well, it's time for today's key player highlights. They're brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. And Darren Coates in the first quarter, well, he just started ripping off yards. First drive of the ball game, four carries, 45 yards. He ends it with a touchdown round to give Southern a 7-0 lead. Then in the 7-7 game, it's Coates on the touchdown catch. Darren Coates, 20 rushes, 107 yards, and a score. And Coates also had four catches for 46 yards and the touchdown. And, of course, he had that big catch on a third and two that set up the field goal for Southern that made it a nine-point edge and really took away from any kind of chance of Gramley State coming back and winning this ballgame. Still a lot more to do here at the... Superdome in Louisiana. We'll have highlights in New York with Otis Livingston and more from the Bayou Classic. Southern, a winner in the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic. Southern wins the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic. Let's head it down to the field. Rod Broadway, the head coach of Grambling State with Darren Horton. Thank you, Bob. What happened, coach? Got out played, got out coached, and uh, we didn't execute very well. Southern played a good football game. Uh, you know, we got down early, came back and made a little bit of noise. And then the kicking game got us in trouble. We had a block punt, had a couple bad snaps, and just couldn't quite get out of the hole today. Early on, you moved the ball relatively easy against this Southern defense. What did they do that caused your problem? Well, um, they just played hard, and they played fast. And, you know, we didn't execute quite as well as we should have or, or uh, quite as well as we've been executing in the past. So we got to go back and regroup, and we got to get our guys to the championship game in the right frame of mind and play a little bit better than we played here in the last couple of weeks. How do you quickly regroup and get ready for that SWAC championship game? Well, we're going to go back, and we're going to break down all the tape, and we're going to look at all the areas, offense, defense, and kicking game. And we have three weeks, so it's not a uh, quick fix. You know, we're going to take our time and really try to pinpoint the problems and see what we got to do to make this a better football team. Thank you very much, Coach. Bob, let's go back to you. All right, Darren, and Southern forced the issue in this football game as they were able to pressure Grambling State, and they caused Grambling State to have numerous miscues during the course of the ball game. Hence, they outplayed them. Yeah, you heard Coach Broadway talk. He said that you know Gr Gr Grambling didn't lose the game, and, or, or Southern played very well, but Grambling helped them out a bit with some of the miscues that they had during, during the ball game. They just didn't do a great job of, of handling the football. You see the high snap there by, by Cocker the center, not recognizing his own blitz throwing the interception, and then the opportunity right here. He steps out of bounds, doesn't have the chance to get up the field and make a big play. And then you see the special teams that he talked about. The block that went for the safety, and then the bad snap. Led to another, the tackle inside the five. And then here, Southern makes the play on special teams, blocks the field goal. Yeah, these are all key plays in the ball game, and he said they've got to stop the run, protect the ball, and be good in the kicking game. Those are the keys to victory. Darren Coach was over 100 yards rushing in the ball game for Southern, and those were all keys in the victory. Yeah, and Darren Coach had did an, played an outstanding game uh, for, for Southern, and, and Southern actually put the whole game together, and that was the difference. Yeah, that's the key why Southern was able to come away with the victory, 22 to 13 in the 34th State Farm Bayou Classic. Very impressive performance for Southern as they come up with the victory. Don't forget get tomorrow night Tom Brady and the undefeated Patriots march towards history with their high-powered offense as they welcome the Eagles to New England it all begins at 7 Eastern with football night in America only on NBC coming up next except on the West Coast it's your local news then starting at 8 7 Central it's the NBC movie of the week the Incredibles followed by 30 Rock for Don McPherson Darren Horton and Lewis Johnson I'm Bob Papa saying so long from the Louisiana Superdome Southern, a 22-13 win over Grambling State on a day controlled by special teams, defense, and a solid running game. You've been watching the 34th Annual State Farm Bayou Classic. State Farm Insurance. On April 3rd of 2007, college